Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode 175 of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast for the week of November 10th, 2017. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me as always is Bun Bun Battle Station, Dan Ryan. We're all going to do podcast voice tonight. <laughs> Dan and I will be continuing our journey <laughs> through every single Mario game this week with part two of our Mario Retrospective. But before we go any further, here's your weekly reminder that you can email us at mail at geekade.com. Just include the word Stone Age Gamer in the subject line and you can let us know what you think of our show, what topics you would like us to discuss in the future, or just say hello, because we always want to hear from you, the listener. So, Dan, how are you? You know, now now that I say it out loud, I'm thinking that instead of podcast voice, like if we if we would have planned ahead for this, I mean, we did, but like Plan if, ahead. If, we, <laughs> if we would have more planned ahead than we did. We should have done this like Radio Shock Doc, like a morning zoo for this month. It would have been fun. Like Crazy Ira and the Douche. I've been watching a lot of Parks and Rec. So. <laughs> we just talked about that on this week's episode. This week's episode was uh, The Fight, which indeed fe- featured uh, the douche. It's so good. Like, it's so good. Parks it's and- such a good show. Parks and Rec... It's it's got to be up there in the conversation with like greatest sitcom. Like I mean, the sitcom maybe is unfair to categorize it because it's a little different than a regular sitcom type show. But comedic I mean, it's, shows, it's, it's got to be up there. Yeah. I mean, like because we're uh, talking definitely. like Honeymooners, I Love Lucy, Golden Girls, Parks and Rec, IT Crowd, and I know those are all vastly different, but like. This is some of the funniest fucking things that have ever happened. Just adore that yeah, show. No, Parks and I, I said last night that I think, I mean, Parks and Rec started as a flagrant ripoff of The Office, and I think it surpassed that show in just about every way. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's not even close. I mean, now, British Office versus American Office is, that's another argument to be had. Um, I would still say it's better than the British office. I think that the British office is overall better than the American office, though I think the American office had higher high points, but it went on for way too long. Oh my god, way too it long. So overstayed its welcome and got just turned into a genuinely bad show. Yeah. But man, when the office is good, oh. the office is high points. Like once the American office diverted enough from trying to be the British office and mm-hmm. found its own voice, sublime. But I think Parks and Rec overall, like, there was never a bad season. That show kept getting better, and then it ended, and I still wanted more. Yeah, oh, you know? I, I could have way, mo- like, way, way more of that show. A ton more. We should just, let's just do this instead. Yeah. <laughs> like, instead of a Mario retrospective, let's just talk about our favorite sitcoms. Like, I know you already did this week's episode this week, but. <laughs> I'm rewatching Scrubs. <laughs> See, that's one I never got into. Really? Yeah. I love that show. It's, I know. Most people do. It's just not for I, me. I haven't watched it in years uh, because I, I overwatched it. I watched mm-hmm. it to death. And I, I just, I every time I would try to like watch it again, I'd be like, yeah, this is just this doing absolutely nothing for me because I I used to have it on at Game Crazy near constantly. I right. just loop that stuff over and over again. Uh, and now it's finally safe for me to watch it again <laughs> it's been I, long I, enough yeah i was looking for something else to listen to while at work and i was like all right well i've i've blown through the star wars movies and and indiana jones and goonies and I, I've, I've gone through a lot of my dvd collection so i was like all right what do i have a lot of i have most of scrubs so right, i'll give it a try and i threw in the threw in the first yes. disc and i was really Enjoy. enjoying myself and um getting a lot of work done so well, there you go I mean, that's it's, kind of one of the great things about it is, yeah. is like it's it's it just reminds me of working. So I'm like, it was really good concentrating, and <laughs> I needed a break from Law and Order because I I did ten seasons of that, and I I think I just need a quick break. It, <laughs> it, I mean, like I know you love it, but it, it's not that good. I it mean, is it, that good. It, it's Law really and Order not. is that good. It, it really is. It, objectively, it isn't. I you are objectively <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I mean, I object. Dun dun! Like it's just oh, see what I did there. Law and order jokes. 
I, uh, yeah, Scrub. Like, there's two shows that Tiff and I just never got into, and we tried because we feel like they're for us and like we're made for us and our friends and people like us and whatnot. But uh, Scrubs and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, I never got into it. It's Always Sunny either. I tried that one a couple of times, just didn't click. Scrubs, I can I can get why somebody wouldn't like that, um, especially if like like say uh, a Zach Braff just kind of rubs you the wrong way. No, like, I I like Zach Braff. A, and yet you don't like now that now that's a big fat mystery. Yeah, that's weird, right? <laughs> you don't like Zach Braff. I mean, if you do like Zach Braff and you don't like Scrubs, now that's that's a big mystery. Yeah, man. it's it's very strange. That's weird. Like like I understand more with it's always sunny. Like I really I don't understand why Tiff and I don't like Scrubs. Like it's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's one of those shows where every time like one of our friends is like, oh, you got to watch this show. It's great. And the, like, the, you don't like this show. Oh, you have to watch this show. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's coming on right now. Let's watch it. And every time this probably happened like seven or eight times in, in our lives together. And every time it's always sunny comes on after we're done with the episode, the person that, that made us sit there and watch it again is like, uh, th- that wasn't a great episode. Like fuck every episode I've seen of this show is not <laughs> a great episode. Therefore, ergo, it's not a great show. But I just anyway, that happened to us with Arrested Development. Yeah, I don't like that one either. Yeah, I don't and, care and for like, it. I was looking at it like this should be funny to mm-hmm. me, but it's just not really. It's not doing it. I so. mean, there's always money in the banana stand. That's funny, but that's from like the first episode. Yeah, like it's it's I'm been not all saying it wasn't. steadily downhill since then. Yeah, that one didn't really strike me as genuinely a bad show. No, but just just it not didn't for me. Catch me enough to make me yeah. want to keep watching it. So I don't love the Good Place either. Oh, that's heartbreaking. I adore that show. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's not Parks and Rec, though. Oh, no. But I also don't think it's necessarily like a... It's not like a comedy like that one. Mm. Like That show's got an overarching narrative. Like, oh, no, I know. The Place is such a weird show because it was marketed as like a sitcom. Yeah. But it's it's like... It's almost a weird, entertaining sci-fi kind of. Yeah. Because it's like, like... I love Ted Danson. <laughs> God, I, so- and he's he's really good in that show. Like he's putting Especially in work. Especially this season. Have you, are you like you kept up on? Yeah, it at yeah. All, Tiff or? watches it. She loves it. I just God, he's amazing in this season. Just oh. oh god. That's right. She's sitting on the couch right now. Every time she hears her name, she like pauses her video <laughs> and looks at me. You, you're watching the Good Place, honey. This is riveting radio now. Now that it we're really talking is. to you, tell Tiff that I agree with her. <laughs> the Good Place is great. Chris said, "Go fuck yourself." I did not. <laughs> 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 I, I most assuredly did not. So, have you played any video games? <laughs> um, other than Puzzle and Dragons, no. I, I've been so super busy this week. We've had tons of like adult shit going on, like actual life, and I haven't felt well really mm. since like August, <laughs> which I might want to go to the hospital for. I think at some point. But, like, no, like, I've just had, like, an on and off cold for, like, months, and I just just kind of sit around, and, like, Pat is just always on my phone, and it's just, hmm. <laughs> like, I don't have to commit much time to anything else, so, like, I need to jump back into um, Horizon, really, really honestly, because it, it's just, you know, family things that keep coming up every, every minute. Yeah, I, I hear that. You need to send me back my copy of Zelda, too, because you're going to get it on Switch when you get your Switch. Nope. I'm going to play it on Wii U. I'm going to play them both <laughs> at the same time. It's, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> Be like Moss in that episode of the IT crowd where he gets both copies of Harry Potter. <laughs> like three people get that, and that's fine, because they're fucking laughing their tits off right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm still enjoying the heck out of Super Mario Odyssey. I'm not super far into it. Like I don't get a lot of time to play. I did have fun with it. Um, John likes to watch me play it. My son John mm-hmm. and uh, he um, he actually wanted to play it yesterday. So I started him up on a fresh game, and he was playing the game. He's awful at it. Oh yeah, but, uh, very frustrating. Like, really understand the concept of movement, but it's got this great like learning mode in it uh, i forget what they call it now i'm like a, not, what the hell is it called it's some sort of like super easy mode for it um basic where bitch mode basic bitch mode we'll yeah. call it that okay and um it, it like gives you 
quadruple health. You you can't. Oh, that's you know, drown. cool. Like, like you don't you don't lose health. Like you, you don't need to go for air when you're swimming. Um, and there's that's arrows. Actually, everywhere. pretty cool. The game puts just puts arrows on the ground, oh, telling you which right. direction you should be going. Um, and it's it's really quite nice. Uh, and and John was having a blast running around in it, and he's you know he kind of got the hang of a few things. He did a couple of he, he managed to do a couple of jumps, but he's. Yeah, he he kept moving the controller, like pressing up on the analog stick and then tilting the controller to the right to try to steer Mario. Like, right. He plays it like, you know, my mom would play a video game. Well, or, he plays it like the reason that they made the Wii. Like, watching yeah, exactly. people do like, that shit just, forever, they're like, oh, we'll just make a controller that does that. And it doesn't. It just isn't coming from anywhere. He's never played something with motion controls before. It's He's, just a natural... Yeah, it's Because it, we've all done thing. it. Right? Yeah. Like we've all, there's two things, I think, at least these two that we've all done at some point in time with video games. We've all like moved the controller to try and get that extra little bit of the jump when we know we're not going to make it. Like, mm-hmm. ah, fuck. <laughs> right. That kind of thing. And mm-hmm. we've all tried to look around a corner or look around something oh, yeah, on a flat definitely. picture that you can't fucking look definitely. at. Like you can't do it. But we're all oh, like, you know what else? Oh. Uh, press the button harder for a different result. Oh, Yes. Yes, yes. That's I do it with the Mario in Mario all the time. I'll press the button harder because I want him to jump harder. Or something. It just doesn't work like that. We're all so, pressure sensitive. We're so stupid. Oh, so so that was really fun watching him play that. And I I just got to this part part where so Dean uh, had been telling me he's just telling me like the game is all about New Donk City. Like mm-hmm. it's the greatest thing ever is running around in New Donk City. And so I got to this point where it said that that's the next place I was going on the map, and I was all excited. Uh, so I put the game down because I was in bed and I wanted to, you know, do that on the TV. Right. And um, so I went downstairs one night and and to play it, and I got off track. And like uh, Bowser just showed up and attacked, and it was like this really super fun boss fight with Bowser where he throws. So so you have this magical hat in the game. And Bowser's something's up with his hat because he throws it at you in the beginning and it knocks Mario down. But at this time, he throws his hat at you and then these two mechanical boxing arms pop out of it. Naturally. And so, like, you flip over his hat and then you put it on and then you just go up and start beating the shit out of Bowser. <laughs> it's like, Christ. just punching the crap out of him. It's And it's super fun. Like, it was it was really fun. And then I went to, hopefully, uh, I thought where I was going next was New Donk City, and they shot me over to, uh, I think it's called the Lost Kingdom, and it's like this forest place with all this purple death swamp water everywhere, <laughs> and you get to be these awesome caterpillars. So they're these like, crazy accordion-sounding uh, caterpillars walking around. They're not like wigglers. They're just these other weird-looking things, and when you get to take over them, you do this cool thing where you, you stretch super far so you can like cross a chasm, okay. and as long as your feet land on the other end, they'll then... like scoot his butt back over when you let go of the button it's yeah. like it's really cool um that is cool the game is so freaking clever man it's so fun i don't know uh, so, I'll, so, I'll let you know my opinion in two months <laughs> seven years seven years i did play. um i did see thor oh i'm hoping to see that this weekend it's so good yeah I, it's I hear so good, good. things and I love the first two, which so I know do is, I. They're kind of divisive. There's I a lot didn't of folks know, that don't love the first. I didn't two. know that. They're, yeah, it's, who doesn't like the first yeah. two Thor movies? A lot of people. Why? A lot of people, especially the second one. A lot of people hated the second one. That's dumb. I know the second one's so much fun. It's, the whole freaking portal fight at the end. It's good. Absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it's good. It's fun. Malekith it. is good. Fucking um, uh, oh god, uh, what's what's their mother's name? Oh, Blanket. oh, uh, Frigga. Frigga. Her death scene is like oh, one of the most poignant in in the whole brutal. like universe. It it's a good movie. Yeah, I love it. Love this that one movie. is like so, when he so to incredibly see, uh, tonally different, but it's I fabulous. Can't wait. Cannot wait. So yeah. one night, um, when we were uh, God, what were we doing? I don't remember what we were doing. We we're watching something because we also blew through Stranger Things as quickly as we could, which was oh, yeah, super we did fast that. because we did that. We too. don't have a lot of time, but uh, one of the nights it was after Stranger so Things, and uh, we were watch- oh, we were catching up on our CW superhero shows, which I'm only half paying attention to anymore because like the quality's dipped a terrible. bit. They're not, they haven't quite reached terrible yet, but uh, they're they're not catching me the same way they used to. Um, so I I had the switch and again I I didn't want to do that Bowser fight and I didn't want mm-hmm. to close the game 
because I'm I'm that lazy <laughs> that I just didn't want to, you know, ugh, I don't want to have to start the game again when, Ugh, when I go to play. I really just want to press the button and then jump right into whatever this is. So I went on uh, to the shop and I updated my Switch wish list, Naturally. which is is freaking huge now. Yeah? Like I was kind of surprised uh, how many games are on. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab it because it's right next to me. Hold, hold on a second. All right. So, so I got my Switch here. And um, let's see, what was I, uh, where's my wish list? I have to go to the shop for that, right? I was yes. really genuinely surprised by how many games I had on uh, I had on my wish list already, but it doesn't automatically take them off when you buy them, which kind of made me That's sad. But a uh, little weird. It's a little, a little weird, a little dumb. Oh, hey, yeah. Uno came out on a Oh, on shit. Switch. Yay. Fuck. So let's see, we I got gotta, 22 We got to pause the podcast so I can go buy one now. Yeah, got to go buy a Switch nope. and Uno, because you can't just play that on cards. No, you can't. Now, like, some of these games, like like Axiom Verge, I, I've already played it, but I'll play it again. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll play that game uh, twice. Yeah. Uh, Octodad's yeah, coming out, out on this. Which is great. Uh, I'll, I never finished it when I got it on Wii U, so I'm totally going to buy it again. It's only 15 bucks. Obviously, Doom's coming out. Uh, I still have Street Fighter on here. I still can't see myself paying 40 bucks for Street Fighter 2, but Mm-mm. apparently a lot of people did. Capcom made money off of it, so um, I wouldn't mind buying that Snipper Clips game, the new version they got coming out, because that's kind of cool. VVVVVV is coming out on the 17th. I'm absolutely buying that again. I'll, I love that game to death. Mommy Demastered, I mentioned on the show. There's a cool yeah, game called Yono cool. and the Celestial yeah. Elephants. I still want Mario and Rabbids because I heard that game is great. Uh, I'm not going to pay thirty bucks for Cave Story, but if it ever goes on sale, sale I'll buy it. I'm sure it will. I, I hope so because, like, I would love to have Cave Story on the Switch, but thirty dollars really? That's that's Cave a Story is a short game. Mm-hmm. It's not long, and if VVVVVV is ten dollars, I wouldn't say Cave Story is worth three times that amount. Now, if that no. included the, you know, Cave Story 3D. Which sure, it does yeah, not. I, it does not. And if it if it did include like the fully polygonal cave story that I could play on my TV in HD, yeah, I'd pay. Then then all of a sudden that game's worth thirty dollars to me, right? Because Cave Story 3D was really cool, but it wasn't super playable on the 3DS because I don't know, it just was. It was you know the screen's relatively small, and I, I feel like that would really the way they did that would benefit greatly from HD because uh, it just became kind of hard to. To figure out where the platforms were and whatnot, but mm-hmm. and I also wish I had the money to buy Farming Simulator because I'm sure my son would love it. Yeah, but it's Farming Simulator. Farming Simulator. It's I looked at the trailer and it's just like, oh, here, now, get in this tractor. And I was showing the, the trailer to John. He's like, look at that tractor. And I'm like, yeah, I gotta <laughs> get this game for him. He's gonna fr- <laughs> flip his shit over it. I mean, honestly, I almost bought Mortal Kombat XL today. Not uh-huh. because I really want it, but because it's on sale right now, and I had no idea you could play as a xenomorph. Like I knew you could Jesus, play as Fred, really as as Jason, and I knew you could play as Leatherface. Yeah, and I knew like, about those two. I didn't know about the xenomorph. I Jesus. did not know about the xenomorph, and I was like, "Oh fuck, is that worth twelve bucks?" Like I think it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> 12 bucks yeah i mean i don't really like the uh, new mortal kombat games but for 12 all. bucks i'd buy a mortal kombat game for 12 bucks hell yeah like, if they shit, threw mortal man. kombat xl on switch for 12 bucks i'd buy it yeah i think i might have to. jump around as a xenomorph punching yeah. scorpion as a xenomorph how do you say no to that i know and like one of the special <laughs> moves was like you drop down an egg and a face hugger jumps out and like fucking jumps on the dude and i'm like oh this is the best and like one of the fatalities, he is he eats him with his little mouth. And I was I was watching it. It was just like right back to Family Guy. I'm gonna eat you with my little mouth. <laughs> That's funny. That's worth twelve bucks, right? That's like, the laughter alone is worth the twelve bucks. Oh Jesus! Uh, all right, so let's right, let's start Mario the show, games. huh? Let's get this oh, started. Boy. So we're here. We are. Wait, how much longer our... can we avoid doing this? For? <laughs> hey, I'm see. excited. There's some damn good stuff to talk about this. There week. is, but there's also Mario's early years. Which, <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Which I have so we're talking through. about every Mario game from 1990 to 1999, uh, and this includes some very painful droughts, if I remember correctly, and some very high highs. So let us begin. 
The first game featuring Mario that was released in 1990 was Kicks for Game Boy. QIX. QIX. Uh, classic arcade game. Um, that's a, I, I, have you, you've played Kicks before, right? Sure. I haven't played it in a very long time, but it's <laughs> just like the, the puzzle, the, like the block dropping thing. Right, like 3D. No, black it's dropping. um. The no, you're talking about Clax. Oh yeah, that's well. I mean, you, you, how dare you? Gotta, you you got to know crimpet. You want to know crumpet? You got to know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Fuck. <laughs> Jose Canseco bet. Tell me. Tell you me. Play. You didn't pay money for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cinematic okay. perfection. So yeah, I'm looking at it. Game. Yes, I have played this. I remember yeah. this. So this one's uh, pretty notable because uh, I don't remember where how you get to the screen or anything, but this is um, this is Mario in the mariachi outfit, um, yeah, which is totally relevant today because that outfit is in Super Mario Odyssey, and it is indeed a nod to to this specific mariachi Mario outfit because that it's it is exactly like the details are exactly the same, and and that's a really cool nod, I thought. Um, the, all the outfits in Mario Odyssey are really interesting throwbacks to specific other games. But yeah, if that was a, I loved this game. I, I played the heck out of this game and, um, I wish I could remember how you get to that screen. It might, might be like a high score or something, but I don't remember. But yeah, he plays and there's like a cactus and I think there's a vulture sitting on it and he's like sitting there playing a guitar, wearing a poncho and a sombrero. So because why I don't not? know what that has to do with kicks. Like I really don't, it's <laughs> but whatever. I did. Uh, I did think it would be interesting as we go through this, and I uh, I was slow on my head foot here to uh, get the uh, just to give our listeners some of who may be much younger than us um, an idea of just how different things were, or for the listeners who are as old as us, just to go down memory lane. In 1990, the Billboard Year End Hot 100 Singles of 1990. Just want to give you the top three. Okay. Number three, Nothing Compares to You by Sinead O'Connor. Mm-hmm. Number two, It Must Have Been Love by Roxette. And number one, Hold On by Wilson Phillips. Proceed. Hmm. I'll, I'll pull right. up 1991. <laughs> I, I, I don't Speaking know why. Speaking of fantastic <laughs> music, uh, Dr. Mario came out in 1990 for the NES Game Boy and versus Dr. Mario hit the arcades. Um Dr. Mario had excellent music by uh, Hirokazu Hiptanaka. It is fantastic music. And I I've love never it. I love loved Dr. it. Mario. I've never loved it. I've tried. I had it. I had the NES one. Um, I had it on Game Boy. I just, I just never. It, like, it, because there wasn't even like a huge divide. Like, there wasn't a like Tetris versus Dr. Mario camp. Like, at least I don't remember there being one. No, there really wasn't. It was like Tetris blew up the world, and then all of a sudden everybody wanted to make well, puzzle games. Well, all right, yeah, yeah well, let's make falling block puzzle games. And then that Nintendo came out with Doctor Mario, and I was I was in love. I yeah, loved Doctor Mario. It just it could ne- it never grabbed me the way that that Tetris did. Like I I recognized the strategy and like I had fun with mm-hmm. it, but it was it just wasn't one of those things where I was like, oh yes, new Doctor Mario, you know, like. Wasn't something it's that just, I ever looked forward so to. It's so different from from Tetris. No, I know. You know it's I know, it's such but... a different kind of pace, which is you know, um, I don't know. I, I I I loved it. I loved the music. I loved the the design of those cute little viruses. And yeah, it, it is just excellent the, music. You are correct. It really is. And uh, I I didn't. I had the NES one. I didn't have the Game Boy one. Um, I remember playing it on a friend's Game Boy, and it really just made me mad because there's no color. So yeah, like we're talking about a color matching game and like we're matching dark gray, white and light gray. And yeah, it just kind of eh, didn't, mm. didn't really mm-hmm. rub me the right way. And I have never played versus Dr. Mario in the arcade. Although I imagine it's just the versus mode from Dr. Mario. Oh, I'm yes, sure. Which I played a lot of. Yeah. I say the other thing. My sister would play this game with me all the time too. So, and I still play Dr. Mario to this day. Huh. Not me. Good times. All right, continuing 1990, we had F1 race for the Game Boy. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> all right, so so the game itself is not all that fantastic. is is not all that special. But uh, there are these. I think it's challenge modes are what they are, and this is where Mario comes in. Uh, these challenge modes are are crazy cool. I, I wish I could. I should have looked up the the list of them. Um, 
because it's not just the Mario characters that appear. It's like everyone appears in this race uh, challenges. Uh, so you get these, um, like it's Mario and then Luigi and uh, crap. I gotta be a little. I gotta be more specific on Game Boy because you look up F1 race challenges, then a whole bunch of a. Uh, here we go. All right, so like actual F1 cars show up, and that's that's not what anyone's after here. So let's see. No. We've got uh, challenge course. One was Mario. Uh, mm-hmm. Two was Toad. Three is Luigi. Four is the Princess. Five is Link. I oh, know six is Mario. So who was one? Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, six is Mario. <laughs> seven is Samus. Eight is Pit. Nine is Donkey Kong, and then there's like one that just has Nintendo and it has Bowser there. So okay. it's one of the it's it's kind of similar to that like ending thing in Tetris where everyone's dancing together, uh, which we'll probably mention in a bit because that wasn't last week, right? That we didn't hit Tetris yet, or did we? Did we? I don't remember. I think we did. Yeah, Maybe no, we, we did. did. Yeah, we talked. We, we about did it. hit Tetris. Yeah, we did talk so about is, it. There was yeah, a, there was a lot of games like that. last week. Yeah. I don't remember last week too well. So this is kind of like, you know, that kind of a situation where it's like, and, and here's all your NES stars, including Pitt. That makes me so happy to see Pitt in these kinds of situations. Yeah. You know, back before they forgot about him for eons. <laughs> and Link is, still has like the big cross on his shield, which is hilarious to me. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that's F1 race. Neat game. I uh, neat-ish game, I guess. It's, it's, it's fun. It's not bad. It's just an F1 racing game. And it's got a bunch of weird Nintendo cameos in it. Yay! There you go. All right. All right. Next, Next one. 1990 for Super NES and Super Famicom. My, my favorite Mario, Mario game and one of my favorite games in all of humanity, Super Mario World. Or Super Mario Brothers 4, as it was known in, in Japan. Super Mario Brothers 4, Super Mario World. Why did they go with <sighs> Super Mario World in the United States? Or was that United States and Europe? It was U.S. and Europe. I think was was just Super Mario World, and in Japan, I think it was called Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario World, Super Mario Brothers Four. Uh, like it just had a little subtitle on the title screen. Mm, okay. And, uh, they may have even removed that at some point, but yeah, I don't know why they didn't just keep calling it Super Mario Brothers Four uh, as the subtitle, other than just I guess keeping things short. I don't know, but. It matters okay. not to me. Uh, this is th- this game is just about as close to perfect as as gaming gets for me. I think it they tightened the controls from Super Mario Brothers three, uh, which was already phenomenal uh, game, but it just kind of it built on what Super Mario Brothers three did so much, and and it added like all this great secret exits and stuff. Like there's so many great secrets in this game all over the place, like. The, the map screen in this game, how interactive it is, and how all the different paths branch off when you find the secret exits and the keyholes, and oh my god, this game is just so good. I play through this game every couple of years or so, I'll get, you know, the Star 96, all, all the levels, all the exits, and mm-hmm. I just do it all from memory, and it's always fun every single time I go through it. Now, I know you're not the hugest fan of this game, right? No, I I just, I was bored of Mario by this point. Um, however, I can recognize how incredibly good it is. It is one of, it might be my favorite looking Mario game. Yeah. Like I, love I really love the way that this game looks and the way it moves. Mm-hmm. That's very, very cool. And yeah, and really the looks was one of the first things that I remember seeing this in Nintendo power before the Super NES launched or anything here in America, one of the first things I ever saw of a Super Nintendo was, you know, uh, that that old screenshot of the super gray giant bonsai bill that was in Nintendo mm-hmm. Power. And I remember just looking at that and losing my mind. Like, oh my God, look at the size of that thing. That's incredible. Yeah, it was just really you know, cool. And how much Yoshi added yeah. to the experience. Like, that was really cool. And, um, you know, you, the, the special world and the star road and... The throwbacks to Mario Three at the end, you do the, the sunken airship, and and the Bowser fight was like really interesting at the end, where you had to like kick the Mecha Koopas up at his head, and the commercial for this game is mm-hmm. it's my favorite video game commercial ever. Uh, just um, the American commercial for it. Uh, I'll I'll see if I can get Evan to splice the audio from it in here. It's just it's. Suddenly the sky is a little clearer. The water is a little bluer. 
The road's a little bumpier. The jumps are harder. The level's deeper. The character's smarter. The sound is hotter. The graphics cooler. The secret's darker. The danger's fiercer. The challenge a whole lot tougher. And suddenly the world's a more exciting place to be. Super Mario World. It comes only as part of the system it was created for. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The next generation from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. Super power. It's just pure wonder and delight. And uh, the, the, this game just took everything that was wonderful about the Mario universe and expanded on it in so many beautiful and, and interesting ways. Like, God, I remember I, there's so many memories of this game, like the finding the top secret area for the first time or when I did the, the, the Yoshi suicide move uh, to get the... Um, the, mm-hmm. the hidden exit that's behind the exit thing, you jump mm-hmm. under it, and then you jump off Yoshi and sacrifice Yoshi so that you can get I to know, the it's end. It's so sad, though. Oh, like, like, it's God. so sad, but like sad. figuring that stuff out is just so awesome. Um, God, this, the, it's it's a freaking masterpiece. I adore this game and will always adore this game. It's one it, of is, the, it is very, very excellent. Like I said, not my, not my favorite, but I do, as I'm softening in my old age... I'm coming around on it. Understanding what fun is. <laughs> no, not not there yet. Definitely have to point out that um, this was also the first Mario game where the music was all done around a centralized theme, mm-hmm. um, which was also kind of melted my brain back then because I was I've always been really interested in video game music and. Um, what Kondo did with this game was uh he did that do 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 like that that Mario World theme mm. every song in the game is patterned around that so like it all always comes back to some variation of that central theme which you know all, all the previous Mario games they had always had great music in it but it was all like individual songs for individual places and Mario right. World really just kind of had the, it, everything was so cohesive in it and it was Ah, <sighs> wonderful. Just it was a wonderful. world. <laughs> some was. might argue. So, some might. Dinosaur Land. Mm. The Vanilla Dome. <laughs> Everything was named after food, too. Donut Plains. Mm. Donut anyway. Plains was... I like those. those. Marge I would eat me a that donut. whole game. That's a donut. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. <clears throat> All right, 1990, the last game released in 1990 was Super Mario Brothers 3, Nelsonic Game Watch. We talked about those last week. They're very, very simple LCD games. Mm-hmm. That's it. Moving on. 1991. Give us the oh, muse, well, Give us the hits for 1991, Dan. Number three. <laughs> Gonna make you sweat everybody dance now by CNC Music Factory. Oh, nice. Number two. This makes me so happy. I want to sex you up by Color Me Bad. <laughs> fucking best song ever I wanna sex you up oh god it's so good <laughs> fucking white guy with his shitty haircut love that <laughs> so awesome <laughs> fuck man and uh number one everything I do I do it for you. Oh, by Brian, Brian Adams. Adams, right? And wow. Oh, Robin Hood, Prince. Robin of, Hood, Prince of Thieves. R- Robin Damn, Hood, what a good Prince movie! Of, Prince of Tides, isn't that what it is? Robin Hood, Prince of Tides. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I love that movie. Fuck people who don't like that movie. That movie's anybody dope. Who does, yeah, anybody who doesn't like that movie is incorrect. Alan Rickman alone oh, makes that movie amazing. Buy a spoon, cause it's cause dull. It's dull it'll you hurt more. Twit. It'll hurt more. <laughs> that movie's fucking great. It really is. Oh, good stuff. Why, does it, why doesn't he talk with a British accent? Because he's Kevin freaking Costner. Anyway, 1991. Also, uh, <laughs> God, that leads to the best line I think ever uttered in any movie is the fucking men in tights. Because unlike, unlike some other, Robin other Robins, Robins, I can speak with a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like, I know Mel Brooks movies, like people love them. And, like, Blazing Saddle sure is the funniest movie ever made, but Men in Tights, I don't know if people realize how funny that movie actually is. Yeah, I think I think that one gets a little <coughs> overlooked more than it should be. I mean, it's not... I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's Spaceballs good, but it is... Oh, man. It's, it's so, so good. It's Dave so Chappelle good. is so funny in that movie. I'm on West Bank. I'm on East Bank. I'm on both Bank. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know why I'm so delirious tonight. Anyway. I don't know. 
Anyway, uh, so uh, the first Mario game in 1991 was NES Open Tournament Golf. There's no denying the fact that this is indeed a Mario a Mario golf game, unlike no. golf, where it was just like some fat dude who might be Mario. No, this uh, is... This is 100% Mario in his striped outfit. And Luigi... This one was good, too. I liked this one. Yeah, this is a pretty decent game. I like I'm, golf games. I'm, Always have. I do like I do like golf games as well. Golf Story, that's another um, uh, Switch game that I'm I'm looking to eventually get. That Dean might be the first the game that, that I. Game. That might be the first game that I purchase for my daughter's Switch. This <laughs> golf story because I'm in. So adult. here's my. I guess it is <laughs> Daisy, isn't it? Like this is yeah. the. That's definitely Daisy, huh? Because mm-hmm. like I remember the the title screen. It doesn't specifically look like Daisy, but I, I, I'm looking at the actual artwork, and yeah, totally. That's totally Daisy. And that's uh, so. I guess this is the first time they really paired up took Daisy out of Super Mario Land. Right. And, uh, and brought her, like, her kind of Luigi. officially to the masses. Yeah, like, here she is in the Mushroom Kingdom. And Mario's playing golf. <laughs> yeah, like, I love their outfits in this one. I love I love this game. Yeah, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty fun golf game. It's way better than golf. Oh, my God, it's, it's, not, even a, it's not even a comparison. Yeah, no, golf and is you, a boring-ass game. Oh, and you play this with the power glove? I mean, fucking... <laughs> I've never played this with the power glove. It's just a good time. The way it should be. <laughs> All right, let's see. Moving on, uh, 1991, uh, we had Super Mario Brothers 4 for the Nelsonic Game Watch. Again, mm-hmm. super simple. So let's see. Um, this is... No, this isn't the drought. This isn't this isn't the drought. No, we we there's some good it's stuff coming, coming up. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, well, then we have um, for PC Mario teaches typing, is which is uh, does? yeah yeah because Mario can do anything. Mario mm-hmm. teaches typing is a uh, is really fascinating to look at, just because of the way the game moves is really bizarre. It's just animated so weirdly. Um, you know, you, the turtle show up on the screen, and they have a letter on him. You press the letter, he squishes the turtle. Yay. I don't yeah. know what more else to say about it. So uh, let's hey, move on to the next one. Super Mario Brothers and Friends, When I Grow Up, also for PC. Yeah, I have no idea what this is. Never heard of this. <laughs> it's, um... I mean, it doesn't it's kind of like good. a... No, no, it does not look good. Is this uh, one of the software toolworks ones? or Oh, this is Merit Software. Uh, it's like a coloring book, it seems. Um, yeah. This is one that I, so, I knew existed, but I never bothered to look into it before we did this podcast. So, um, some really shitty picture of Link in here. It just, yeah, it's just like it's it's like Mario Paint, but crappy. Like I'm looking at someone on YouTube right now coloring in businessman Bowser pointing angrily at a chart, and Mario and Luigi are standing in front of him, looking like, oh no, we pissed off the boss. I mean, don't get me wrong, that sounds awesome. That sounds like a great game right there. It really does. It sounds like fun. (laughs) But. (laughs) But. uh, Yeah. Yeah, no, this is, yeah, moving on. Let's let's not waste any more time talking about that particular thing. Uh Oh, I lost my show notes. There they are. Okay, so let's see. Next up, one of the best titles in all of Mario history, Mario the Juggler. What is this one about? I think it's about juggling. <laughs> Shut your whore mouth. <laughs> it's a game and watch game, um, and it is. Uh, I mean, if I remember correctly, it's 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 very similar to Ball, which was um, the I think that was I the first that. game and watch game was yeah. Ball. Yeah. So I mean, it's just it's this one's in full color, and it's just kind of like an enhanced version of Ball. You're still just a uh, you know, trying to keep your hands underneath the uh, the things as they're flying through the air and not letting them drop and touch the ground. It's cute. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's a variation of the game that we've all played at yeah. at some point, like the PC game where you have to like move the thing over and not let balls drop. It's familiar, but it's Mario, so I'm sure it's old. Yeah, I mean it's it's cute. I mean, it's it looks almost exactly like Ball, except instead of a stick figure, it's Mario and it's in color. Yeah, so 
Good on you, Nintendo. There Way you to go. go. All right, now I I remember when this game came out. Uh, also in 1991 for NES and Game Boy, we got Yoshi, and this was one of those things that was like, oh my god, they gave Yoshi his own game, but it's a puzzle game. I was so disappointed. Like I didn't buy it. I didn't want it. I was so mad. I you know I saw the pic a picture of it in the store. Like I saw the cover and I was like, oh my god, there's a Yoshi game. I love Yoshi. Yeah, I want to play this. And then I looked at the back of the flap at Toys R Us, and I'm looking at it like, wait, what? What is this? Why would you? Oh, hey, do I like this? puzzle games. Hmm. I'll give this a try. Is and it so good? I did, I've never played it. It's not bad. It's um. It's weird. It's a really strange puzzler. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a, so you control Mario or Luigi at the bottom of the screen, and there's like these trays, and you can like swap the trays left to right, and monsters will stack up on them. And if you get two monsters in a row, they disappear. But what you want to try to do is get a like a bottom of an egg to land, stack a bunch of monsters, and then put a top of an egg on it. And it'll eat all those monsters, and then the egg will hatch, and the more monsters that are in it, it'll be a bigger Yoshi, and the bigger Yoshi you get, you get more points. And that's, like, it's so tangentially a Yoshi game. Right. Um, just appearance, appearances only. I think the most remarkable thing about this game is that the soundtrack was done by the same guy who did the soundtrack to the original Pokemon games. And mm. you can really hear it stylistically. It's very similar. So it's so it's it's got some really good music. Um but that's really the only memorable thing about it. It's it's not as good as Yoshi's Cookie, it's just kind of an okay puzzle game that had Yoshi slapped on it. Yeah, I was I was very disappointed because I was like, Oh Yoshi game, that's cool and then Yeah, then no. Nope. All right, also in 1991, we have the Super NES version of SimCity, which is, oh, boy, do I love that game. God, talking about good music, Soyo Oka did just an amazing soundtrack for SimCity for Super NES. Uh, so it's SimCity, it's on Super Nintendo, and what's uh, the Mario connection is that there's, um, or there's two Mario connections in this. One, I think it's if you hit Megalopolis status, you get to build a Mario statue in your city. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. And the other one is in the PC game, you could do a monster attack where it looked like, you know, right. a Godzilla type thing. But in the Super Nintendo version, it's Bowser, which is awesome. It is awesome. Bowser just shows up and messes up your city because <laughs> he's and a it's awesome. Dick. I did love this it, game. Got me too. it's me. They too. were like these were games that were just super fun. And then after a while, like they they continued to come out, and at some point I went, yeah, I don't ever need to play this again. Yeah, after you know? SimCity 2000, I stopped. And uh, I, I have gone back and played the Super NES version of SimCity once or twice. In fact, yeah. when it was re-released on the Wii Virtual Console, I played hours of it again. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And then I lost it when my Wii U um, got corrupted, and when I sent it to Nintendo to get it fixed... They erased all of the games off of it and credited my account to rebuy the games, but SimCity was no longer available on there. So I didn't get my SimCity back. That's shitty. But I still have the original cartridge. And I'm still hoping to, to see that um, NES version of SimCity uh, dumped. I, I heard that it was actually dumped on, and it's going to be distributed online. I will totally buy a repro SimCity NES cart because I, I got to I gotta play it. I'm, I'm sure so it'll excited. be. I'm sure it will. I wonder if Mario's in that one too. Like I know Doctor Wright is. I've seen right. I've seen him show up in the game, but you know I'm, I'm curious if like the Bowser attack and the Mario statues mm. are in that version too. Very very curious. All right, Dan, we're moving on to 1992. What are the hits? Number three, possibly the like this is where where the country started to take a turn, and I think that's what's interesting here mm. is as the country goes, so goes Mario. Maybe I don't know. Um. 1992, the uh, the third most popular song of the year was Jump by uh, Criss Cross. Mm. We all wore our pants backwards and drew big K's out. Spelling in our... my name K-R-I-S, I got a lot of flack for not liking these kids. How could you not like this song? You know what? I may have liked the song for about 15 minutes, but then everybody started teasing me because my name was K-R-I-S, and like, oh, I like Criss Cross, right? Shut up. <laughs> well, number two, 
Baby Got Back by Sir mix a lot And how is that only number two? Because number one, Chris, was End of the Road by Boys. <laughs> Baby Got Back's a better song. I, number 13 is I'm Too Sexy by Right Said Fred. <laughs> hmm. I mean, 92 was like, 92 is a weird year. <laughs> like, number 18 is Life is a Highway by Tom Cochran. Number 17 mm. is November Rain by Guns N' Roses. Oh, number man. 15 is Achy Breaky Heart by Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh, ho, 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 hoo, <laughs> number 12 hoo, is To Be With You by Mr. Big. <laughs> I know you remember that fucking song. And Jesus. like, number eight is Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Like, we started getting weird <laughs> in like 1992. <laughs> like, shit came off the rails. I'm excited to see where, where things go from here. Indeed. Also, so Bohemian see. Rhapsody was back on the charts in 92 because of fucking Wayne's Thank World. Thank you, Wayne's World. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, starting off 1992 with a bang for for uh, boy man, t- you want to talk about disappointed? You thought you were disappointed with Yoshi mm-hmm. for NES, Super NES, and PC. We got Mario is missing, dude, and this did not look like an educational title. No, and if I had thought about it for more than a second when I saw the software Toolworks was the company that made it, I would have right. known better. But the the premise of this game was. Oh, it's a Luigi game because Mario was captured by Bowser. Mm -hmm. I am in. And you look at it and it looks like Super Mario World. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a platformer. And I was so mad when I got this game. I didn't buy it. I rented it. And I was was an unhappy camper. And you got a shitty Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego ripoff. Pretty much. But not even that good. Yeah, it was just like geography lessons and big fat stinking thumbs down from me. It's so bad. Very disappointed. Very, it's not very even, disappointed. Like it's not clever. It's not funny. Yeah, it's it just, just is middling. Mario, it's just Mario is missing. Great cover <laughs> art. You know, it is like, great cover art. I'm, it did I'm a looking great at the job ad of right. making me want to buy this game. I'm looking at the ad right now, and it, it, it says it right there. I mean, this is maybe something we all ignored, but it says, The Software Toolworks presents a geography learning adventure that's way cool. And I disagree. Yeah, I also disagree. No, very, sir. Very, very much. I don't like it. Mm-mm. Although, uh, well, let's see. It's uh, Yeah, no, that's right. The music in this one was done by Rob Wallace. So, yeah, I have things to say about music of a future Mario game, which we'll get to very shortly. So let's not talk about Mario's Missing anymore, because that game just makes me mad. And let's talk about the interesting case of a game called Super Mario Race, which was released as a Nelsonic Game Watch game. Mm-hmm. And this was a... Uh, we talked about um, the like 3D Hot Rally and whatnot being Mario racing games. This right. was probably the closest thing we would get to an actual precursor to Super Mario Kart. Uh, in fact, the game was theoretically based on Super Mario Kart, even though I believe it technically came out before Super Mario Kart did, not by much. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I've never actually played it. I've I've seen like images of it and whatnot, but I've never actually seen one in person, so I've never played it. Right. It's got the same font as Super Mario Race mm-hmm. or Super Mario Kart. I mean, like the, mm-hmm. it has the same font, like on the. Uh, it's got that that Super Mario Brothers three font on like the packaging and whatnot. So it might have, like maybe developed somewhat in conjunction. Yeah, I, uh, I think that's probably about right. Um, I mean, because they like, were doing look a at lot it, of these at the time, like. Super they were, Mario World yeah. had one, and Zelda had one, and, like, they, I mean, they were just, they were cranking out these Nelsonic games, or these Nelsonic watch games for, like, mm-hmm. everything. Now, I'm looking at it now, and it actually looks a little bit more like it's a, it looks like he's driving an F1 racer. So, maybe this is actually a little bit more in line with, a, uh, like, like the, the 3D Hot Rally and the... You know, Famicom F1 race game we talked about Perhaps. more than more so than you know. And here's the other thing: Mario is on the side with the freaking checker flag, so I don't even think Mario's yeah. driving the driving the cart. 
Maybe mm. he just hadn't gotten his license yet. I guess. Something is amiss. He's learning. He, he's an immigrant, which, I mean, it's true, yeah. going through the system, it takes a while in this country to get, you know, your paperwork done and all that. And the whole Mario, Mario, Luigi, Mario thing. I'm sure that, yeah, that made that's the weird. MV very happy. I mean, fuck Joe Arpaio. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, moving on, uh, <laughs> the next <laughs> next Mario game to come out was the very first Super Mario Kart. Oh, boy. I love this game. It's such a damn good game. It really is. What like, a great I, idea. And it I spawned an it. entire genre. Yeah, I, and that's kind of what I hate about it, because like, there's a lot of really bad kart racing games, like mm-hmm. Mascot kart racers there's a lot of awful just horrendous shit but the mario kart games have always been excellent they really have and this is one of those things like <clears throat> probably one of the more out of touch sega commercials that came out was when they were uh they were pumping out like they were really yelling about their blast processing mm-hmm. and like they were com- they were saying and if you don't have blast processing you're left with this and they showed like mario kart and i'm like yeah it looks awesome um, I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's the no one offense I play. to Vector Man, but I'd much rather play <laughs> Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah, Yeesh. bad move there, guys. <clears throat> Super Mario Kart. I don't think Vector Man was in the commercial. I think Vector Man was later. But I, I digress. Super Mario Kart is freaking amazing, man. I, I love this game. It's still got a, a you know, great track design. Um, it's that crazy Mode Seven thing. I wasn't mm-hmm. nuts about the way that the whole game was constantly in split screen but uh, right you know i got over it because you were playing multiplayer in this most of the time anyway right yeah that's, yeah. that's how this was not a uh not a super fun single player experience like that didn't come until a couple mario karts later when yeah like really it was made that cool good because i it. yeah i mean i, well, I sure. loved the single player because you know you had to unlock the the characters and the, the, not the characters the 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 mm-hmm. special mode, special cup. Gee, special mode. The hell there you go. Me. Uh, way you're to go. tired. Way to go, brain. I am. You're tired and you're old. That's true. Stop I am being tired so old. and old. I'm both Jesus of those Christ. things. <clears throat> Another great, uh, great soundtrack by Soya Oka. Again, she did just so many great Super NES soundtracks, and uh, I, it's it's just an absolute classic. And it's a classic for a reason. I still think it holds up. I know a lot of people don't think the Mode Seven stuff holds up. I. I just love the way it looks. I always will. It it just looks so neat to me. It is still fun and, to play. Like it, I mean, it is certainly, and we'll talk about more Mario Kart games, obviously, as we go along here. And and it has mm-hmm. certainly been eclipsed. Um, oh, very much so by later entries. But there's still a lot of fun to be had in the original Mario. Yeah, and it's got a great bar battle mode too. Like mm-hmm. great one on one battle mode in this. Uh, before four player was a thing. That's. Great game. <laughs> it's excellent. What's not to love? It's All right, no Crash see. Team Racing. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to disparage Crash Team Racing, but I'm I'm Team Mario Kart all the way. Yeah. All right, let's see. Continuing 92, we have a cameo in uh, the Super Scope 6 game, and one of the mini games in it, the missile shooting one, apparently mm-hmm. uh, Mario will fly by in a, an airplane. Mm-hmm. Which I, I assume can only assume is the sky pop from Super Mario Land. Right. I, I've never actually seen that happen before because anytime I played Super Scope Six, I was always playing Mole Patrol mm-hmm. because I love that game. It's basically whack a mole with a bazooka. What's not to love? So, but apparently Mario is in this one, so that's neat. I learned something new about my Super Scope games. There you Super go. Got to go awesome. back and play it now. Got to go. I do. Uh, let's see. We also had in 1992. We had Mario Paint. Which now that game I I do love. That's that was a really fun art program that was uh, very Mario flavored. And uh, did did you mess around with Mario Paint? Oh yeah, of course. It's um it's, I I was never I've never been very good at <clears throat> like doing graphics intensive stuff on a computer. Like it's just never really clicked with me. Um, so I I enjoyed the the musical aspects of it way more oh yeah the music making program is is great like i was i like even to this day i can't like fucking do computer imaging at all but the the music maker i just thought was super fun 
And like, I love that people are still doing modern things with the Mario Paint composer. Yeah, they've done. <laughs> like, it's awesome. There's like this crazy, like, kind of broken out mode where you can put in more things and, and stretch it out longer. And people are still making music with those instruments, which is hilarious to me. It's very, very cool. Yeah, I know Mario Paint was was so great, and I. My sister and I used to do like really violent animations on there, like stick oh, figures course. getting slaughtered with blood shooting everywhere. And... Well, that's because oh, you my were God. a kid in the 90s and you were so aggro and tough. That's right. Mortal Kombat. That's right. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Fuck blood. <laughs> yeah. Mario Paint. Definitely th- it's as many thumbs up as I can get it. <laughs> and I, I wish they'd make a new one. Sorry. I just, I just scrolled by. I come looking at images of Mario Paint. There's a bunch of fucking Koopa Troopa turtles. This, and then Yoshi. And the troopers say, we like cock. And Yoshi just says, me too. That's fucking <laughs> funny. That's, I'm going to fucking send this picture to you. That's fucking funny. Please do. I'm going to look at my new desktop. So I'm excited. Good. Best day ever. It's so simple. <laughs> The it's greatest of, comedy is. It's not a lot of blood and extra shit going on here. We like cock. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Mario Paint was awesome, though. Because you were like, one oh, of the I many did, reasons. I made Mario say fuck. And you're like, and that was so cool. You know? Which is. And if you are young enough uh, to not know Mario Paint, the interface for Super Mario Maker is based like on Mario paint completely. Yeah. It's pretty the, much the same thing. The rocket to erase things. That's Mario paint. The undo dog. That's Mario paint. The save robot. That's Mario paint. It's a, it's, it's love Mario maker. Yeah. All right. Hold on one gotta, sec. We got to keep, yeah. Hold, hold on, on one, one sec. Oh, sorry. There was just loud noises after that. Okay. We're good. All right, go ahead. All right, we got to keep we got to keep this train rolling. We've got a yeah. lot of games to talk about and not a lot of night left. No. All right, continuing 1992, Yoshi's Cookie, the superior Yoshi puzzle game. This game's neat. You're Chef Mario, and you've got to like match up cookies so that they go into Yoshi's mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not not something I ever played. Really, you never played it? Oh, it's, it's, no. a, it's a good puzzle game. It's, no, I, it's, was, uh, I was way it's, too cool for that by this point in my life. Ah, gotcha. In 1993, um, like, I was a teenager playing a game called Yoshi's Cookie. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> I had no shame. I was all yeah. over this game. All right, well, that's what I like about you. Yeah. Lack of shame. Indeed. <laughs> I have a lot of that. Um, mm-hmm. hey, you know, it's like a really early, I guess gem swap kind of thing this isn't a mm-hmm. falling block puzzle this is like you get a bunch of stuff and then you rotate those things to to line up a different like the same type of cookie to make those disappear it's it's a pretty fun game also pretty good music and that's all we need to talk about with yoshi's cookie it was on nes super nes and game boy now in 1992 the last 1992 game that had mario in it was the wonderful super mario land 2 six golden coins for the game boy this game is awesome. It, it is. Su- like, comparing this to the first Super Mario Land is, like, and they're still both on Game Boy, but, like, they, the sprites are so much bigger and better looking. More detailed, yeah. Oh, it's just this, such a jump no forward. question that this game is functionally better in almost every way to the original Mario Land. Uh, the only way the original Mario Land beats this game is in the music department mm-hmm. because hip Tanaka cannot be, cannot be topped. Uh, no. not that the music in six golden coins is bad, but, uh, you know, the original, it's Mario just not as is it, amazing. It's lacking that one, like killer catchy, catchy. Thing. Yeah. It's cause this, this also followed a similar formula to uh, super Mario world. Like this game was really super Mario world light, mm-hmm. uh, right down to the fact that the, the, you know, it had a centralized theme for the soundtrack the map screen functioned in a similar fashion, just not quite as in depth. Uh, I did love how creative the worlds were in this, like uh, mm-hmm. the Mario zone and the tree zone, the pumpkin zone, the space zone. Like, right. They were really cool. Uh, really the cool bubble stages, level like, is really cool. The, the bubble the level, Lego. the anti-gravity stages. Yeah. Uh, like, There's a lot of really, really cool really ideas in here. Yeah. 
and it introduced Wario. It introduced us to Mario's demented childhood friend, Wario. <laughs> Wario is ridiculous. Wario is. We'll I love to, Wario. He's we'll get so to him ridiculous. in a minute, though. Yeah, because that, that's, that's a character that I'm so glad they kept around and mm-hmm. just continued to flesh out and make him just weirder and uh, just ridiculous. Super Mario Land 2 is a great game, and uh, that's another one I like to play through a bunch. It's... I loved how it kind of co-opted certain things from Mario World um, and was able to make a lot of that stuff work with the limitations of the Game Boy. Considering what it is, it's a very, it's a very, very good game. It still does feel a little weird because it's still Game Boy and it doesn't, it's a little more floaty than it usually is. Um, yeah. But this team, you know, eventually moved on to the Wario Land games um, and were really more their style. It's much more slow paced than a Mario game and that works for them, so... But we will get to that. All right, Dan, let's move on to 1993. Give us the hits. Well, the song at number 10 really should have been number one, um, and that was Informer by Snow. Because, <laughs> you know, okay. say, Dead Snow, may I go blam. A licky boom boom down, indeed. Uh, number three was... <laughs> 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 number three was Can't Help Falling in Love by UB40. Mm. They're uh, the remake of the classic. Uh, number yeah. two was uh, Whoomp, There It Is by Tag Team. And I'm so glad they were able to tell me where it was, because I <laughs> was wondering. There it is. Whoomp. There. There it is. There it Tag is. Team back again. Um, and number one was I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. And, uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Ugh. Never been a big Whitney Brutal. Houston guy. Oh, she's yeah, incredibly talented, but just, you know, it's not, not for in, me. It's not Informer by Snow. That's what is. It's not even Rump Shaker by Rex and Effects. <laughs> <laughs> You've made this show at least 10 times better. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I don't know why. It's just great. Anyway, so what do we got in 1993? In 1993, we have for Super NES and PC. The uh, the fool me twice mm. <laughs> because I rented this one too. Mario's Time Machine. Mm-hmm. This was the follow up to Mario is Missing, and uh, this game is also a steaming pile. It's but somehow I'm a sucker worse. for time travel. Who is it? I, I I saw Mario in a time machine in a game called Mario's Time Machine, and I couldn't I couldn't resist. It's like I right, see this is a sequel to this, but I I gotta try it, and I'm really glad I did because while the game is a pile of crap. The soundtrack was done by none other than Mark TDK Knight, the guy who did our theme song, Chubby Chubby Chip Chip, for this very podcast. And the soundtrack is all these really interesting um, time period piece versions of uh, the Super Mario World tunes. And they're really cool. They're, like, the, the instrumentation is a little weird, but mm-hmm. it's really, really interesting to listen to. And... Um, so I, I highly recommend listening to this game. I do not recommend playing it under any circumstances. Just, just find the soundtrack. Send uh, just, send Mr. Knight an email. I'm sure he'll hook you yeah, up. He's a nice guy. You. He's a good guy. Mark TDK Knight. Thanks Big for fan of the show. show's theme. That's right. Thank Big you. fan of the show. All right. So uh, moving on. Uh, 1993. Still, Mario and Wario came out for the Super Famicom. And I was always so bummed this game never came out in America. Like, really, really bummed. Because uh, I saw pictures of it in EGM and, and Nintendo Power. Right. And it was like kind of like a Lemmings-style puzzle game. Yeah. Where you have a, a bucket has been dropped on your head. <laughs> and apparently it's a magic bucket that you can't take off. So there's a fairy floating around. <laughs> and uh, you control that fairy <laughs> with the Super NES mouse. And you have to guide the different characters with buckets or whatever the heck on their heads to uh, like the finish line where I think Luigi or Toad or somebody will pull the bucket off of their heads. Because somebody it's else a, can pull the book, bucket off of your head. Yeah, but you, you can't. You just can't. The bucket that Wario dropped on your head. That's where right. Wario comes in. <laughs> this Makes. is such a weird premise for a game, but it looks so cool. The visual style is so colorful and so like just brilliantly Super Nintendo 
Yeah. Like, it's, I, using that as an adjective, it's, it just, it makes sense too. If you, if you know what I'm talking about, it's, it's such a cool game too. I've played it now, not a lot of it, but mm-hmm. you know, through emulation and whatnot, uh, time walk games before they went under, they had a, a great looking boxed copy of a repro cart that you could get, but then they disappeared before I could buy one and I missed my opportunity. But I really, really wanted this game to come out and, uh, I was so sad when it, it didn't, but you know, I, I Japan, can't, so it's out there. I can't see this have having done well in the United in the United States. I think it would have done all right. I mean, if a game, I mean, it I didn't mean, I just, have a ton put into it. And if games like Yoshi and Yoshi's Cookie could have done well enough, I mean, this is just catering to that that same crowd. Yeah, and maybe. It, you know, Wario was a very popular character at this time. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a breakout character when they introduced him in Six Golden Coins. So this was this was basically the equivalent of Yoshi. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I understand why they didn't release it here because it was a mouse game and, you know, I guess not a lot of people wanted to bust out their Mario Paint mouse to play games. I don't know, but I was, I was still sad that it didn't come out here. Yeah. All right. 1993 continuing. We had Super Mario All-Stars, which uh, I, oh boy, do I love this game. Um, So, so if, in case you're unfamiliar with Super Mario All-Stars, it is a... Uh, 16-bit remakes of Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, plus Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, which is the Japanese Super Mario Brothers 2, which still isn't a great game, but is much more playable in the All-Stars version because uh, it looks nice and pretty. <clears throat> and, and God, they were like real remakes, like visual complete overhauls of these games, and they look beautiful. And they used a Super Mario World-style sound effects, and I, I was obsessed with this game. I played the crap out of it. Yeah, it was our uh, our first experience with uh, HD remasters. Yeah, basically, <laughs> you know this w- this was uh, taking old games and putting a new spin on them, and especially Super Mario One, like because Super mm-hmm. Mario One has a very distinct, flat old 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 eight bit look to it, and having that reimagined, looking all super cool. Like I remember thinking about like how cool the castles looked and the flagpoles looked and. Everything about it is just it's just super wonderful. Now, Super Mario One does play ever so slightly differently than the NES version. Super Mario Two and Three, I think, are pretty spot on. Right. But Mario One actually feels a little bit different um, than the NES game, not really in a bad way. Um, and it's also interesting as I learn more about game music uh, later in life. Soya Oka also did the soundtrack to to these, cool. so her, these are all her versions of Koji Kondo's classic Mario themes, and mm-hmm. I think they're overall pretty great i wasn't in love with the super mario 3 treatment but i think super mario 1 and 2 were amazing on here yeah <clears throat> so let's let's move on to a nice trio here mario's early years three more educational titles all released in 1993 for the super nintendo entertainment system we have mario's early years fun with letters fun with numbers and preschool fun by far the three best Mario games ever released. Ever made. Ever conceived. They're just wonderful. And, and no, they're not. They're all. It's, it's just not even close. Yeah. I mean, I've never, <laughs> I, I can't say firsthand they're awful because I've never actually played them, but I have watched some YouTube videos and they don't look fun at all. Fun with numbers? I think not. No, no. Like, and I mean, because keep it in mind that back in the early 90s, like, people were trying to figure out how to leverage video games and computers into classrooms and educational things. Mm -hmm. I mean, just in every which way possible. And because Oregon trail, while a terrible game was a huge hit and like, it was a big deal back then for us to get computers and stuff in school oh, I can learn through a game like this. It was a huge fucking deal. You know, now my kids come home, my my daughters are in second grade, and we just had to sign their contract for their Chromebooks. You you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's just... Times have changed. It is just such a vastly different world. And 1993 was not all that long ago. It really wasn't. I mean, big picture, it was not that long ago so i mean they they were trying to do a thing here but they just the the problem with these games was that they treated kids as if kids were stupid yeah 
you and know, just because there was, you put fun in the title, it doesn't mean the game's actually fun. And that well, was, and there was there was like no learning involved, yeah, and there was nothing really not. interactive or interesting. You know, like you had to complete a sentence, and like Princess Peach has like a mop, and then there's a cat, and then Mario is holding a lid to a pan, and it says the blank is hot, like the box is hot, like the mop is hot. like it's it's just not it's it's insulting. You know, there's no challenge to it, and it's not it's, Math Blaster because Math Blaster was freaking fun. Math I used Blaster to play was Math fun. Blaster. You yeah. know, there was there was good stuff there because there was a challenge to it, and it didn't assume that the kids who would be would be playing it were dumb. Yeah, it was you know? very much. Oh my god, sorry. It was very much just an <laughs> idea that was like, all right, so we're gonna make educational Mario games. And somewhere they just decided we're not going to bother trying to make them fun. Where they're they're going to sell because parents are going to see Mario and education and call it a day. And that's yep. dumb. Yeah. So that's enough yeah. of this crap. Let's move on. Last game of 1993 was the Super Mario Shooter Yoshi Safari. What a weird freaking game, man! You're Mario on the back of Yoshi, and you're it's a it's a first person shooter on rails mm-hmm. with uh, the super scope, and yeah. like you can shoot Yoshi in the back of the head, and he gets mad at you. <laughs> This game's actually the, kind of fun. It's the weird not, game. It's not the best Super Scope game, but it's 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 kind of fun. It's really interesting to look at because you know it's a Mario first person shooter. It's so I weird. mean, I I love that there's official artwork of Mario riding Yoshi holding a bazooka. Yeah, like that's like in the game. Nintendo sanctioned artwork. Which that was the game mean, yeah. that would never happen today. I mean, that would just never fucking happen. I don't know, man. Like the Mario Rabbids, Mario shooting shit all over the place in that game. But he's not holding a bazooka. No, he's holding like an arm cannon. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird stuff. Look, it's, it's weird stuff. It's but I'm glad it exists. Yeah, it's very cool. All right, let's let's keep. Let's keep God, we have so many more games to talk about. Let's keep going. All right, Donkey Kong '94. Oh, 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 oh my God, this game's amazing. Oh, 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 hold on. Billboard Singles, 1994, Chris. Oh, God, you're right. Billboard Singles. I'm sorry. Go, go, go. I'll Make Love to You by Boys to Men was Thank number God three. Thank God for that. <laughs> um, number two was I Swear by All for One. Oh, and boy. number one, maybe even the, the greatest song ever recorded, The Sign by Ace of Bass. Oh, that one opened up my eyes. <laughs> I mean, I saw the sign, and it opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. Life is demanding without. Truer words have never been spoken. So Donkey Kong 94. (laughs) Ah, boy, this game's a freaking masterpiece. Oh, my God. Have you played this? Mm -hmm. This game's amazing. This was I did not. I did not imagine that this game was going to be what it was. No, I thought it was going to be. <clears throat> just a remake of Donkey Kong. And I don't know why I was so excited for that. I was like, yeah, I love Donkey Kong. Because I'd love to have Donkey Kong on the go. Yeah, and that's... Yay, that's neat. Donkey Kong. So I awesome. buy it, and, uh, you know, they were marketing it with the Super Game Boy, and I bought it with the super, my Super Game Boy, and I'm playing it on my TV, and it's all super cool, and you start up a stage, and, and Pauline goes, help, help! <laughs> because when you have the Super Game Boy on, you actually hear the words, help, come out of the screen, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, you play the stages of Donkey Kong, the arcade game, including the Pie Factory stage or Cement Factory, whatever. Right. And uh, <laughs> pie you get cement, to the end. Uh, same thing. Yeah. You get to the end, and, and I remember this very distinctly, just being like, all right, I did it. Yay. I, I, I beat the game. And you get to the end, and it starts playing the ending of the arcade game. And then Donkey Kong, you know, he's on his back, and Mario and Pauline get close to each other. A heart shows up over their heads. Mm-hmm. Donkey Kong flips back over busts the platform you're on, grabs Pauline, runs away, and then there's like a hundred some odd new levels. And it just keeps going. And, and it's they're so awesome. good. They're all awesome. They incorporate elements of Donkey Kong Jr. with the, the, the climbing the different vines. Oh my god. And it turns into this thing of like, alright, now you have to get the key and get the key to the door. And that's kind of the thing, but it's it's still kind of based on the the basic rules of Donkey Kong. Like Mario can't fall too far, but right. they didn't, you know, obviously they still had him being Mario, so you could do a lot more acrobatic things. But it was still played like Donkey Kong. It's a this game's a masterpiece. This game's so good. 
It re- it really really is like, and it it's kind of hard to to even like if you haven't played this game, it's really hard to just even explain it. Like what it was like to to have that moment of all right, sweet. Like I, so, I beat the game. That's cool. Shit, there's so much more of this because so it wasn't unheard of to see like just an arcade classic game yeah. released on Game Boy for 30 bucks. Yeah. It was like they sent arcade classics Centipede Millipede on one cartridge. Okay, that was a game that you could buy in the store. So I just assumed this was Donkey Kong, mm-hmm. but it was so much more and it's so so good. And all the sequels to this, which we'll talk to talk about later, I think got progressively worse. But they did. And not to say that they were bad, they just no. kind of went away from what I liked so much about this. But didn't anyway didn't capture the magic. This was really like a lightning in a bottle kind of thing. It really was. This really game's awesome. a, this game's brilliant. All right, uh, Tetris and Doctor Mario. Uh, it is exactly what's written on the tin. It's another super. <laughs> it's a, a super super NES remake of Tetris and Doctor Mario on one cartridge. And there's a mixed 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 match mode, which is cool. Uh, mm-hmm. It's got the same Hip Tanaka soundtrack. Um, it's wonderful, and it's got Mario in it. So, yay. Next on the list, 1994, Super Mar- uh, Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. We kind of mentioned how this is where things went after uh, Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. Uh, they made Wario the quote-unquote protagonist uh, of the game. Um, I don't even remember what the story was for this one, but it was like he wasn't trying to save anyone. He was trying to get money. He was trying get to get money. money. Yeah. Yeah. And like that's what kind of where the the real Wario greed thing started to come into play. Like this was a game about hunting down as much money and treasure as you could because you were a fat greedy bastard. He's such a cool sprite too. He's so cool and so goofy looking. I love it. Yeah, this was a this very game, very fun game. And this really played to the strengths of this team because, like I said, with Mario Land Two, it still kind of felt off as far as being a Mario game, and this kind of more plodding pace is really was really up their alley and uh it, it's it's wonderful now i don't know we're going to talk a bunch about more wario land games after this because i don't think mario appeared in many more of them right uh i know mario was involved in this one and uh it was called super mario land 3 for crying out loud so. just a damn good game Damn good game. Uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum for pre- for PC, we got yet another piece of Mario uh, edutainment garbage called Mario's Play School. Uh, I honestly, I know very little about this game. I tried looking it up. It looks very similar to the Mario's early years things. I think it's kind of like a compilation of those three games on PC, and it's a steaming turd. Mm. And you should stay away from it at all costs. Uh, speaking of turds, we got Hotel Mario for Philips CDI. Yeesh. Ugh. All right, this game's not terrible. It's not as bad as, like, the Zelda CDI games, which are legit awful, awful games. They are terrible. No exaggeration on that one. No, they're This they're game's the actually not terrible. Um, it's, it's kind of fun once you get the hang of it. It's ridiculous because it's about closing doors. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like there's a bunch of doors on the screen. You have to, like, go around and not get hit by bad guys and close all the doors, and then you move on to the next stage. So it's... I mean, it's it's kind of a puzzly game. It actually reminds me a little bit of Wrecking Crew. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, it's that kind of puzzly game. So you're, it's like a puzzle platformer. It, it it's kind of neat. the The bad is really the animated cutscenes, which are very loosely based off the Super Mario Brothers Super Show kind of stuff, and they're just atrocious. They're really it just bleh, bleh. it just looks so bad. It does. It does not have a good look. No, it's it's so bad. Yeah. So bad. Uh, now, not so bad is Super Mario All Stars plus Super Mario World. This was a pack-in game where they basically shoved Mario World on the same cartridge as Super Mario All Stars, and you'd think they would have left it there, but no. There's actually some differences in this version of Super Mario World, including a Luigi sprite. Up until this point, Luigi had in all the mainline Mario games just been a palette swap of Mario, except wearing green. Including in Super Mario World, but in the version on Super Mario All Stars and Super Mario World, uh, Luigi has his own sprite, his own animations, mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. It's kind of neat. That is cool. Yay trivia! And then the final game of 1994 was the Donkey Kong Now Sonic Game Watch, based on the arcade Donkey Kong game. I'm pretty sure, uh, which means Mario was in it, trying to get Pauline from Donkey Kong. Yay! The end. Okay, we've done it. We made it through the first half of the show. It's now almost 10 o'clock. 
boy, we are going to... Oh, we're going to die. All right, so we're going to do a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about games released from 1995 to 1999. You are listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com, so please stick around. And now, here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at Geekade.com. First up, following up from their spooky Halloween episode, Dave and Jengas dive into the Merfolk vs. Goblins dual deck and appreciate cards that have saved them at a pinch. Next, they do talkback for the most recent D&D sessions that were a part of End with Xanthar's Guide on the Horizon. They talk about class options they'd like to see included in the next book. Finally, our heroes talk about the importance of local hobby shops and review Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Don't miss You Shall Not Pass Go, Episode 21, My Best Friend's a Slime Monster. (laughs) (laughs) A funny name. Then, even though I personally love the Thor movies, it's no secret that they aren't the best loved in the MCU, as we talked about earlier. So our movie reviewer, Alex Zwizek, was a little surprised when the trailers for Thor Ragnarok showed off a movie that appeared to be both badass and funny. Does this latest installment of the franchise live up to the immense hype? Don't tell me. I haven't seen it yet, and neither is Dan. Yes, he has. Mm-hmm. He t- told me he did. That's why the conversation started. I'm yeah. tired. But you should find out more in Zwire Reviews, Thor Ragnarok, a.k.a. Oh God, an enjoyable Thor movie. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I made the same joke on Trapcast. So if you listen to both podcasts, you know I have no originality. Finally, pretty much common practice in the comic book world to bring back killed off characters. So pretty unusual to hear about a character who died and has never been properly brought back, at least not yet. Such is the case for Thunderbird, a.k.a. John Proudstar, a Native American member of the X-Men created back in 1975. Learn more about him in Welcome to the D-List, Thunderbird. You can catch all this great stuff, plus tons of other articles, videos, podcasts, and more right now at geekade.com. All right, we are back. We are uh, there's so many good games to talk about here and we're probably not going to give them the time they deserve nope. because it's getting late. So, first up, 1995. Give us the hits, Dan. Uh number 2 and 3 were from the same artist. Number 3 was Creep and number 2 was Waterfalls from TLC cuz wow. they were just on top of the world and number 1 Gangsta's Paradise. Oh boy. Coolio. Not as good as I- as Amish Paradise, not gonna lie. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's all about Weird Al's Amish Paradise, man. That's that's our next top ten. Like, let's plan that for like January or something. Like top ten Weird Al songs. You and I will go back and forth. It'll be a good. That does sound good. I'm going to see Weird Al for his a uh, new tour. Really? Yeah, I bought tickets. I want I'm very excited. I want to do that as well. Anyway, all right. Anyway, all right. So, <laughs> the first game of 1995 that Mario appeared in was the uh, sublime Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest. Where does Mario appear in this game? Well, I think it's after you beat it, uh, depending on how many collectibles you get. There's like a ranking system mm-hmm. that Cranky Kong does. And Mario's in first place. Uh, Link is in second place. Oh, man, I don't remember who was in third place if you don't make it on the pedestal. It might have been Yoshi. I think it was Yoshi. And then there's a garbage can that says No Hopes, and it's got Earthworm Jim's gun and Sonic the Hedgehog's shoes next to it. <laughs> Which is kind of awesome. <laughs> kind of awesome. No but Hopes, yes, no uh, fucks, either way. Yeah, just totally whatever. And, uh, yeah, Mario is there in Donkey Kong Country 2, and he looks weird. Uh, so then we've got, in 1995, one of my favorite games of all time, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Um, God, I could gush about this game for so long, but I'm going to try to keep it relatively minimal. Um, this is one of the most beautiful video games ever created. It is stunning to look at to this day. The art direction is absolutely incredible. The colors, this took advantage of the Super FX2 chip for just absolute insane boss battles, screen filling enemies. Um, God, the Raphael, the Raven battle where you land on the tiny planet. And as soon as you start moving, you think you're going to start rotating around the planet, but the entire screen starts rotating around. Oh my God. This whole game is freaking nuts. 
and it still holds up to this day. It's it's we, we've I can't forget we've how much about you this. barely played this game. I right? was so not into this. Like at this point of my in my life, I this was just the absolute opposite of anything I was interested in. Like Cause baby I remember, Mario, we, cute dinosaur. I was <laughs> fuck this. Not even because we were talking bit. when the Super NES Classic came out. I was talking about Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy with you. Right? Yeah, that was. Oh my god! Yeah, no idea. <laughs> like stage, just had is insane. No, you've you've got to see this game. You've really you've. If there's a way for you to spend a little time with it, if you can, if you can get over the fact that you just don't like this kind of, I don't know, coloration or anything, just seeing how gorgeous this game is put together, like. They made cave levels look impressive, and that's not the easiest thing to do. Cave levels are usually just kind of bland. Right. It's so lovingly crafted, and so in, it's so smartly done. It controls like a dream. The The Baby Mario sound effect is obnoxious as hell, and I hate it. But other than that, really... And, and like the fact that the, the game is, you know, Baby Bowser, mm-hmm. like somebody told him that these babies, the Mario brother babies are going to be big problems for him in the future. And baby Bowser is so hilariously what Bowser would be as a baby. He's just a complete spoiled, obnoxious brat. It's wonderful. This whole game is amazing. It's just a freaking masterpiece. And there was a game boy advance port, which is a, a pale shadow of the original Super NES version. I'm so glad it's on the Super NES Classic so that the 16 people that actually got one <laughs> can experience it. <laughs> I might, I might, I kid. There's more. I me. might one day try to get to this. Um, if I can fall back to my uh, my latest Why I Love Wrestling article, perhaps there is a way that I can smemulate it. Perhaps, uh-huh. smemulation. Some- Man, you talked about smemulating Saturn games. I'm like, that's not. That's not as easy as you say. I know sir. it's not, but I mean, it's a lot easier than it used. To be. I mean, whatever, whatever smemulating is, not that we whatever it is. We don't know. No. All right. Uh, let's see. Mario's <laughs> game gallery. Mm-hmm. <sighs> nope. I mean, it's not technically bad. It's just like a bunch of, you know, chess and card games and stuff like that. It is notable because this is the first time, uh, the first appearance of Charles Martinet as the voice of Mario. Really? Yep. Well, there you go. That's a thing. Yeah, there you go. Uh, speaking of being a thing, uh, Undake 30, same game. Uh, this was uh, a game that was released for the uh, BSX Satellaview, which is the satellite service in uh, Japan for the Super NES, because there was satellite gaming in Japan for the Super Nintendo. Which is kind of uh, awesome. It's, like, Is this a puzzle kind of game awesome. or like a memory game? It's a gem. It's a gem swap, basically. Oh, okay. It's a you know matching puzzle game. You poke the things that are like each other, and then the if they're connected to each other, they'll disappear. All right. And I don't. Yeah, it's it's cute. It's neat. Mario looks kind of demented in it. The little, little Mario heads. But sure. Whatever. It's a weird little thing, and it's got a really weird name, but not quite as weird a name as Excite Bike Bun Bun Mario Battle Stadium. <laughs> That's a great name. Uh, it is a great name. It's kind of weird, and this game is freaking cool, man. It's, it's just Mario Excite Bike, Bike with Mario, right? Uh yeah, it's it's sixteen bit Excite Bike, so it is like you know, it's a little fancier. Um, you know, there's different kinds of. I think there's like different kinds of boosts and stuff. Like it's just, it's basically a sequel to Excite Bike. It's not super. Uh, right. It's, there's not a lot of new things to it, but it's it's really great looking, and you know, you get to be. You know, Toad and Mario and Princess and whatnot on bikes. So yeah, it is basically Excite Bike, but with Mario characters. This seems and like something ins- that should have gotten a proper release. Exactly. Like I get that this was a Satellaview thing, and they were trying to sell that service and whatnot, and having cool exclusive games to it there was sure important. But we're talking like there was no Satellaview in America, so why didn't they put this game on a cartridge and release it in America? It's so cool. It's because everybody loves Excite Bike, and you know Mario characters sell shit. So, I it's a this is a mystery to me why they didn't try to really try to market this game in America. Yeah, it looks pretty as cool. Some sort of budget title, you know. It's not the most in depth thing in well, the sure. history of mankind, but it doesn't but need to be. Excite exactly, Bike. it doesn't need to be. You know, it. They, I would have gotten as much fun out of this as I got out of Uniracers, which was released, I think, in a similar time period. Right. So, 
Which is to Whatever. say, not a ton. Not a, hey, I got a ton. <laughs> I got way more fun out of Uniracers than any person should have. I know. I, I, just, I like to fuck with you for your love of Uniracers because it's weird. It's awesome. Uh -huh. I I mastered that game. Mm, I that... killed every single challenge in that game. Doesn't mean you anyway. should have. Oh, it does. That game's amazing. <laughs> and it has great music. And it's from, I think that was one of the games that eventually became the team that did Grand Theft Auto. But <clears throat> long story. Anyway, all right. So then we have also on the set Teleview, BS Super Mario USA Power Challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more or less just like uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 from Super Mario All-Stars, but with like a couple of neat challenge modes added to it or something. That's cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Nothing all that special, but also not a bad thing. Yay, yeah, Satellaview. Uh, Super Mario... Uh, it's not a Super Mario. Mario's Picross was released on the Game Boy in 1995, uh, which I played solidly for 13 years because that's how long it took for them to make another Picross game here in America. There were more of them in Japan, but we didn't get those. So I played Super, I played Mario's Picross on Game Boy for 13 solid years, and I still love Picross, as mentioned on this show many times. Yep, I've still never played it, as mentioned on this show many times. <laughs> it's just a great puzzle game. Can't recommend it enough. It's available on the 3DS Virtual Console. It's worth your time. Picross. Do it for our country uh also in 95 you got a sequel mario super picross for the super famicom didn't come out here in america but i knew it came out in japan <laughs> and i looked at screenshots and this is like i mean there's like wario levels and there's like 20 by 15 picross puzzles oh my god i want it so bad and it never came out in america and i was very sad but it has the same music and it's all super nintendo fied and it's cool also in 1995 what did the world get the Virtual Boy. Yes. And the launch title for The Virtual Boy was Mario's Tennis. Now, we've talked about this stuff on the show when we did our Virtual Boy special, but I will just say one more time, Mario's Tennis is a very bland tennis game, but mm -hmm. I loved the crap out of it because it's still a fun tennis game. It's, it, it's kind of hard to make a bad tennis game. Like, tennis video games are just kind of inherently fun as long as they're functional. And uh, this game is functional, and it's got cute Mario animations and Mario characters in it. And it is the first Mario tennis game, where he's not an umpire. He's actually playing the tennis. Racket in hand. He's got shorts on and everything. Everyone's got cute little tennis outfits on in this game. It's, it's precious. And then the later games, he's all, like, wearing his overalls and shit. Where in this game, like, he actually got to, you know, put on a sweatband and be an athlete. It's hilarious. Good times. Anyway, uh, also on var uh, on Virtual Boy was Mario Clash. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this one quite a bit. This was an actual proper follow up to Mario Brothers, not like that Mario Brothers Two we talked about last week, <laughs> the unlicensed Commodore sixty four game. Now uh, Mario Clash is gr as a really great follow up to Mario Brothers, and I wish, wish, wish they would re release this on something. Um, cause I mean, all my Raspberry Pi sitting back and playing it on TV is great. Like I wish it just wasn't all red, but, uh, it's a genuinely fun to play game. You, have you, you've played this one? No, hmm. I don't think so. Maybe at this point we've talked about so many Mario games. I don't even know what they are anymore. <laughs> well, Mario clash is great. Uh, it's, and it did 3d pretty well, but it functions just fine without actual 3d, um, so, Nintendo, if you're listening, which I'm sure you are, remake Mario Clash. Please make do. it happen. Do it for our country. Uh, Mario Teaches Typing 2 was released in 96. Uh, Dan, what were the hits in 96? Well, this is where, uh, where shit really comes off the rails. Uh, number three was uh, Because You Loved Me by Celine Dion. Uh, number Ugh. two was One Sweet Day by Mariah Carey and Boys to Men. Um, mm. A fucking... At 15 was Follow You Down Till I Hear It From You, the Jim Blossoms, and they are the greatest band that nobody realizes is actually the greatest band. Um, but number one was uh, Macarena by Los oh. Del Rio. Ow. Hey, fuck yourself. <laughs> That's pretty much how that goes. I mean, dude, like, yeah. think, just, just remember the ubiquitous nature of the Macarena in our lives in 1996. It was disgusting. It was everywhere. It was fucking disgusting. 
<sighs> All right, so 96, we started off with Mario Teaches Typing 2. Which is why, like, that tells you why the Macarena was the number one song, because people were putting <laughs> out this shit. But on the other hand, in 1996, we also got Super Mario 64. Also. <laughs> just as bad as the Macarena. Mario 64 <laughs> is the Macarena of video games. Jesus Christ. Ubiquitous and shitty. Super Mario 64 is great. This game <laughs> it is. I, absolutely ruled the world when it came out. It really and because did. It w- and for good reason. This game revolutionized 3D gaming. Right, and maxed out the N64, right? Right day one of the new religion. That was as, as good as it was going to get. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, yeah, this game... You know, introduced you know a smart camera system and like it was functional 3D gaming. It just controlled it, so well. It did. Even it still does. Even for like because at this point I was so so out of Mario gaming and so into like PlayStations are cooler and like I just want to play cooler stuff. So I don't even, you know I don't even remember what I was playing at the point, but it wasn't sixty. It, it wasn't Mario sixty four, but it just controlled so damn well. Like any, everybody had to try it because it just looked it looked better than anything else that was out there. It was amazing, and uh, a lot of that was art direction and showing off what the sixty four was was capable of, which was basically Mario sixty four. But <laughs> I I feel like this game hasn't aged as well as a lot of people think. No, it, it has it not. Does. It is not uh, a great game to play now. Like it's it's still got its moments. It still holds up pretty well and and better i would say than a lot of games from this generation but uh it does it is starting to show its age uh quite considerably but it is still i mean it's it's a it's a watershed moment in gaming it absolutely this game is 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 very worthy of all the praise that it yeah things where this is one of the games you know we've talked about the there's there's very few games in the pantheon of video game history where it's like okay things are different now yeah, and, and this is one were of them. Different after this, and everyone chased after this game. Yeah, to to try to recreate its success, and few few did. Blasto um, came close. Blasto is awesome. J. Phil Hartman. J. Phil Hartman. Uh, also, in 1996, we got Mario Kart 64. Excellent. Uh, the excellent sequel to game. Super Mario Kart. Yeah, excellent game. Very few complaints about it. It's it's wonderful. It looks great. Plays great. Introduced four player Mario Kart. I was so What's, fun. So yeah, fun. It's just, just great, great multiplayer game. Still holds up to this day. Still fun to play. Still love Toad's voice in this game mm-hmm. before they changed it. Because Toad was so adorable. You go, I'm the best. <laughs> and then in, you like, certainly Super are. Mario, Mario Advance comes out and they go, I'm Toad. Yeah. Like, I don't know. They, they kind of leveled him off a bit, but he was like a crack fiend in Mario Advance. That was weird. Anyway, um, yeah. So Mario Kart 64, great game. Came out in 96. On, you guessed it, the Nintendo 64. We'll cover it more so, when we do a kart racer episode. Yeah, it'll, it'll be it'll be fun. Uh, and the last Mario game of 1996 was Super Mario RPG, The Legend of the Seven Stars. The crazy, impossible dream team-up of Squaresoft and Nintendo making a game together. And it is it is wondrous it's and joyous. It's batshit insane. <laughs> It's crazy. It's so good, and I I think it's still a better game than all the other RPGs, Mario RPGs that have come since. Like, I don't want to disparage Paper Mario or the Mario and Luigi games. I think they're wonderful, but Mario RPG had that '90s Square magic to it that the yeah. other games just don't have. No, it is and, it is spectacular. I, it's not a game I ever finished. Um, it's not a game I even spent a ton of time with. Um. But uh, it is it is incredibly well written. Um, the battle system is really cool. There's a lot of really it's cool really ideas fun, yeah. in there. It's very good. Cool characters, fun story. Yeah. you know, this was one of the first times Mario teamed up with Bowser. You know, this that was still a novel thing yeah. back when this happened, and that was cool, man. Yeah, I mastered this game. I played every inch of this game. I eventually got the strategy guide to find anything that I had missed, like. I was obsessed with this game, and it it had to be something special because it came out on the Super Nintendo after the N64 was out. Right. And uh, if you were going to release a game at that point for the Super Nintendo, it had better be darn good. And it was. Mario RPG was a freaking masterpiece, man. Great, great game, great music, 
great visuals, just wonderful. I really wish they'd either make a sequel or remake this with HD modern graphics because it would be great. Maybe one day. Bah, 1997. Okay. Oh, that's right. This is what I need to mention. This is where the drought begins. Mm -hmm. Um, Super Mario 64 and Super Mario RPG uh, were both in 96 and Mario Kart. But uh, really, Super Mario 64 as a mainline, like, sequel to Super Mario World, the same Mario platformer, that was 96. And we didn't get... You're not going to hear another proper Mario game for the rest of this episode. Yeah. Through 1999. In fact, the next proper Mario game didn't hit until... Let's see, where are we? Um, I'm looking at my giant list here. 2000... 2002 was was when Mario Sunshine came out. Thankfully, we have a lot of good music to tide us over until then. In 1997, Chris, you were listening to I'll Be Missing You... Puff Daddy, Puff Daddy featuring uh, Faith Evans and 112. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was definitely listening to this. It. Was after uh, surprisingly enough, that's not number one, even though that was the year that Biggie was shot, and this was Puff Puff Daddy's song for Biggie. Anyway, um, coming in at number two was uh, for those of us of a certain age, every couple's song, quote unquote, uh, was uh, "You Were Meant for Me" by Jewel. Um, that's Ugh. our song. I have never liked Jewel. You're fucking nuts, dude. I am. That's weird. Were you were you more of no. a Meredith Brooks fan? Because she also charted <laughs> at uh <laughs> in, at number fifteen with Bitch. Um, or were you more into the uh, number eighteen Duncan Sheik, who was uh, barely breathing? Um, <laughs> no, nothing. Okay. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> n- number one. Uh, That year was uh, Something About the Way You Look Tonight slash Candle in the Wind, 1997 by Elton John, um, because this was Princess Diana dying. So, yay. (sighs) Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) There's some really awesome songs on this list. Um, Man, I just, I've, as each year passes, you keep giving me the three top three and they're like, nothing. I have less and less interest in them as the years go on. I know it's, it's weird, right? Like, (laughs) yeah, very strange. I'm not now popular music. I mean, not for me. Genuine's pony is at 62. That's ridiculous. I tub thumping by Chumpawamba is at 69. Wow, and that song was everywhere. That was fucking, but nobody liked. That was, that was the did. thing. Did you? I was. I was like the one Chumbawamba fan. Mm. I had the T-shirt. I used to go to their website. That doesn't surprise me about you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm weird. I'm weird. You're cat. a weird dude. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So 1997, uh, we got another Satellaview Japan only uh, Super NES game. BS Mario Paint. You show Naizo Ban. Mm-hmm. I will. I will show that. I don't know anything about this. I don't know what's different about this between uh, this and regular Mario Paint. Let's 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 take a look live on the show. Um, it just looks like more Mario Paint. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think it's just got a few other. Uh, this is just the damn title screen. <laughs> yeah, it's it just looks like Mario Paint, but on Satellaview. Good job, guys. Okay. Go team. Uh, all right. Game & Watch Gallery. Man, 97 was brutal. Yeah. Jesus, there's three games yeah. featuring Mario. This BS Mario Paint, and then also for the Game Boy, Game Watch Gallery, and Game & Watch Gallery 2. Uh, the Game & Watch Gallery games were... Um, game Gallery 2 was technically a Game Boy slash Game Boy Color. Uh, the first one was just Black and White Game Boy. Right. They are remasters of old Game & Watch games with Mario characters on them uh, and more animations and better graphics. They're pretty neat because the Game Watch games themselves are an inherently fun. Uh, they're just like you know shitty LCD games. So this right. kind of turned those games into cooler things. And I will say this about Game Watch Gallery Two: the soundtrack is shockingly good in that game. Is it just obscenely good music in Game Watch Gallery Two for Game Boy? I don't know why. It's just added like really, really, really good chip tunes in that. Really, uh. All right, then. Really worth it. All right, so 1998, hit me with the hits. All right, the hits in 1998. I have no idea what the number one song is. Um, I, I don't really? know that I've ever heard it. I, see, like, and I keep thinking, like, that 90s music was awesome, but maybe I'm wrong. 
Um, number three was uh, You're Still the One by Shania Twain. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know that fucking song, too. Um, number two was The Boy Is Mine by Brandy and Monica. Oh, oh ugh, yeah. Ugh. And number one is Too Close by Next. I have no idea. Wow. But to show you how fucking stupid and obsessed we were with Princess Diana all around the world, Candle in the Wind 1997 was also the eighth most popular song of 1998. Wow. I never got that. No. I just never understood it. You know why? Because I'm not British. All right. Like, I mean... (laughs) I I just loaded up this Too Close song. Okay. What is this? I mean, it's not number 14, which is actually the best song of 1998, which is Will Smith's seminal hit, Getting Jiggy With It. Na 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 na. Really? This was number one and not Getting Jiggy With It? I don't... It just sounds so generic. There's nothing interesting about this at all. Not not nice and slow by Usher, or no 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 by Destiny's Child. See, like, I know those songs. Right. I don't know this song. I don't think I've ever heard it before, or, and I'm never going to again. Or everybody, Backstreet's back. All right, by the Backstreet Boys. I don't want to miss a thing by Aerosmith. These are all not number one. Sex and Candy by Marcy <laughs> Playground. Not number one. Why Clef Jean's Gone Till November, which is a fucking phenomenal song. I Want You Back by NSYNC. I mean, not that I like NSYNC, but like lots of everyone else did. Yeah, and I've never heard this song before. One Week by the Bare Naked Ladies. Thanks, 1998, for being whatever that was. All right, so (laughs) Marty. uh, Marty. Let's see. Marty. (laughs) Mario No (laughs) Photopi. For Nintendo 64, uh, this is kind of an interesting game. Um, this is a, it's kind of like a super, uh, it's kind of like a sequel to Mario Paint that we never got. Um, something about this, I think, was a, let's see, it was planned for the 64DD. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. There's some sort of history to this that I'm not getting, because uh, the first YouTube video I found of it said that it's uh, the Lost Mario Paint sequel is finally playable. So I, I, I don't Maybe know Maybe just not even the... released? Let's do some more research. We'll come back to that one in a uh, note next week. Cause, uh... well, it was released in Japan okay. on December 2nd, 98. Uh, and, and I watched a video. It's just like a fancier version of Mario Paint. Okay. Um, the game was pre-announced with... I'm um, reading this off of Wikipedia. In mm-hmm. December 97, the game was pre-announced with optional compatibility with the 64DD floppy drive at a time when the drive was expected to launch in June of 98. Mm. But the drive's launch delays meant the game was released in December of 98 without the use of the drive. The 64 meg disk would have provided greater mass storage than a smart media card intended to hold a user's entire photo album and therefore further supplant the need to buy a personal computer. Right. Oh, I see. So this game was kind of tied to the 64 DD, which never came out. So it was just kind of like a, um, more or less a fraction of a game. Yeah. Good job, guys. (laughs) Sorry. Our bad. So that's, that's neat. Uh, here's another Japan exclusive, which uh, I was pretty bummed when I found out that it existed that we never got wrecking crew 98. Yeah. Would have been awesome. Yeah. Um, it's kind of weird because it doesn't play anything like wrecking. Crew. No, it looks like it does, but it's actually a falling block puzzle game, which is, I guess they were just all the rage, right? But falling block puzzle games on, uh, Nintendo platforms are typically very good. Um, and we skipped over Wario's Woods because Mario's not in it. <laughs> but, That's a shame. Wario's Woods is a great game. It is. Um, and Wrecking Crew 98, I've, I've played it now uh, via emulation. Sh- emulation. Sh- emulation. And uh, it's it's quite good. It's it's a, it's a nice game. I've never and, played it. You know, I mean, I would. I like Wrecking Crew. Yeah, it's it's weird. It doesn't play, like I said, it plays nothing like Wrecking Crew, but it is a, is a pretty cool little uh, thing, and it was only on Satellaview, so... Boy, so Teleview is weird. All right, uh, moving on. 1998, still Super Mario Brothers Deluxe for Game Boy Color, which was really cool. Um, this was back when Super Mario Brothers, a portable version of the actual Super Mario Brothers, was still kind of a a novelty. Right, you know? like that was a really interesting thing. And uh, this version of it is really good and has a great 
multiplayer mode in it. Uh, it's got all uh, most of the lost levels uh, stuffed into it as an unlockable. Yeah, um, it's a pretty complete that, version. It really is this. great. And uh, they actually used this in the Nintendo World Championships mm-hmm. this year, uh, <laughs> which was really great to see uh, see that pop up and get to see some people who've probably never played it before give it a shot because. Uh, the versus racing mode in this is really good. Like I, I played this a lot with a couple of my friends at Funko Land. Um, this was a really good time and a great game. All right, let's see. Let's 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 just keep going because these are we're, we're going to start. Ugh, I'm so tired. Mario Golf came out on N64 and Game Boy Color. Uh, the N64 game was done by the Hot Shots Golf people, and the Game Boy Color game had like a bunch of RPG elements in it, and a lot of people like swear by this game. Yeah, and I think that's what Golf Story is actually more or less based on is the Game Boy Color version of Mario Golf. Have you played this game? Uh, no. Me neither. No. All right, moving on. Uh, Mario Party came out for N64 in 1998. Oh. Eh. It's f- funnish no. in a party setting. Nope. It's never really grabbed me. I don't hate it as much as Dan does, are, but I'm not a huge You are fan. so incorrect. I have never paid money for a Mario Party Nor game, should you. I, never I will, will fight you. Uh, uh, yeah. No, no, thank you. No. Um, no, thank you. Mario Party, I, I, I get it. I do. I understand the draw. This was four-player, ridiculous party stuff. I liked the idea behind it, but nope. it just didn't really... I didn't have a lot of people to play that would, would be interested in playing this with me at the time, so I never bought it, and I never bought any of its sequels, because I just didn't care. It's, it's the herpes of video games. <laughs> Ouch. It keeps coming back, and every time you see it, you're fucking pissed. God and this damn is, it. This is what was going on with Mario. The only proper Mario game, new Mario game, was Mario 64 in 96, mm-hmm. and just waiting for some kind of sequel to Mario 64, some kind of new Mario adventure. It had been a couple of years, and it would continue to be more years. So, 99. Last year we're going to talk about in this episode. Dan, what are the hits? I'm, I'm going to give you the top 10, because this is where we started to lose our fucking minds collectively, and music has not recovered since. Number okay. 10, Livin' La Vida Loca by Ricky Martin. Number 9, nice. Nobody's Supposed to Be Here by Deborah Cox. She's not supposed to be here. I don't even know who the fuck that is. Number eight, <laughs> Every Morning by Sugar Ray. Number seven, Genie in a Bottle by Christina Aguilera. Number six, Kiss Me by Sixpence None the Richer. Number five, Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. Number four, Heartbreak Hotel by Whitney Houston featuring Faith Evans and Kelly Price. Number three, Angel of Mine by Monica. Number two, No Scrubs by TLC. And number one, in 1999, Fucking believe by share mm. that weird. Do you believe? No, yeah, no, the, no, the, the, that one. The first auto tune thing. Oh my god! Oh we we have not recovered. I would agree. Things have been like just <laughs> society's been on a downhill slope ever since. Really fucking has, man. Man, believe by share. That's a crappy song. It's a terrible song. I mean. Ugh. Wild Wild West by Will Smith with Drew Hill. That was at 33. That was a better song. Summer Girls by LFO is the best song ever written. And that's only at 38. (laughs) And Dan is not the kind of person to engage in hyperbole. No, I have never, ever (laughs) engaged in hyperbole. (laughs) But like, for real, Lauren Hill put out that thing, that doo-wop song. That only mm-hmm. charted at 41. That's a fucking incredible song. That whole record, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, is fucking great. Yet somehow, <laughs> is number one. Because that's what that song sounds like. It was uncanny. It's al- I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> that was uncanny. It's almost like I have morphed into Cher. I have embraced my, my inner God. fangirl. And I would be pay money to see that. Okay, speaking of things oh, I wouldn't pay money for, you don't have to pay much. Mario Party Two was released on N sixty four. We've already made our feelings known on Mario Party. This time there were hats. Yay! <laughs> Moving on. I can hate it even more. <laughs> also in nineteen ninety nine. Now this was an obsession of mine at the time. Super Smash Brothers. The very first Super Smash Brothers came on an N sixty four. Fun story about this one. Um, my friend Bill Boyer. I was in the library at high school because I did like an elective thing where I worked in the library. Nerd! Uh, yeah, oh yeah, incredible nerd. <laughs> and um, 
I was talking to Bill, and he said, I heard they're making a, a like a Nintendo fighting game where like Link and, and Mario and stuff fight in it. And I was like, bullshit. <laughs> There's no way they would do that. It makes no sense. How could you have Link, Link and Mario in the same game together, like outside of a weird cameo in Mario RPG. No, there's no way that's real. It was fucking real. <laughs> it's real. I've never been happier to be wrong. I, I don't get it. I know I know people love it. Um, It's not for me, but I, I do recognize that people love it. I, I adore it, and I was so surprised by it, one, being real, and two, that it was like, it wasn't just a typical fighting game. There were no life bars. It was just about knocking people off as hard as they could. Right. And as somebody who was so angry at Pokemon at the time, because all day, every day, morning to night at Funko Land, you got Pokemon cards, got Pokemon cards, got Pokemon cards, got Pokemon cards, got Pokemon cards. Oh my God, my son didn't get the Pikachu card that I want. I want to return these cards. I bought a box and I didn't get a Charizard. I need to return these. What do you mean I can't get my money back? I opened all the cards. I didn't get what I wanted. Oh my God, I hated Pokemon so freaking much at this time i'm fucking lousy with alakazams over here i just wanted a charizard i just hated pokemon so much so that i could get a game where i could finally be samus again right and then i could use samus to punch pikachu in the face (laughs) it's a good time yeah i'm sold good times have by all I accept me. I was very but. sad that Pitt wasn't in this game. <laughs> right. I, that was my only real complaint when I got this game. Was like the roster was was great. You know, so, uh, Captain Falcons in it. That's cool. It's uh, you know Ness from Earthbound. That's great. Yeah. Why I'm isn't sad Pitt, Pitt didn't make game? a cut. Yeah. Very sad. I mean, but they corrected took, it eventually. So eventually, yeah. twenty years later, it's fine. It took some time. Uh, let's see. Game Watch Gallery 3 came out, you know, from the people who brought you that other stuff. More of the same. Uh, except this time it was on, you know, Game Boy Color, and it was uh, prettier. That's a lot to, of pudding. To an extent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on the 64DD that did eventually come out in Japan, we got Mario Artist Paint Studio, which was kind of like Mario Paint on N64. Yeah. Meh. Fun. Good times. Mm-hmm. Never came we out in America, so I've never tried That's it. Right. So we don't know. And the last game... 10.30 p.m., here we are. Mm-hmm. God, I'm tired. The last game we're going to talk about is Donkey Kong 64, which uh, we really have very little to say about the game because the only Mario appearance, to my knowledge, in the game is that the original arcade version of Donkey Kong is unlockable in this game. And it's not a great game. No, no, no Donkey Kong 64 is not a great game. It's, it, was, it was a decided... Like, none of us should be surprised that Rare became shit... Because they they released some shit before they went to Microsoft. They did. I remember when the Microsoft sale happened, and I wasn't really all that torn up about it. And you, I was sad because it yeah. meant that that ca- the catalog of older stuff was kind of like you know in limbo. But you know they weren't really cranking out the hits at this point. No. Like I I never got into Banjo Kazooie. No, they have they have Donkey Kong's four or five good games. I mean, the, well, Rare, well, Rare had a ton of good games early. Well, I mean, this. like, like the when they became Rare, like when when they became a huge studio. That's like it's on a catalog of like four or five games. I mean, there's you know the Donkey Kong Country games and Killer Instinct, and do people, do people love Banjo Kazooie? I I understand that. I I do. I understand mm-hmm. why people love that game. Um, but like Donkey Kong sixty four really kind of took that formula too far. Yeah, it's just not fun. It's I I don't think it's fun. The, the game does have its fans. I am not one of them, but I did buy the crap out of it from day one because I was a huge Donkey Kong fan. And uh, y- the only thing I really got to tip the hat on is one: the game looked very good. Mm-hmm. Um, it really used the expansion pack, and it's one of the best looking N sixty four games. I think I still think it's ugly as shit. Right, but that doesn't make it, it is, good looking. It just... doesn't make it good looking, but it does have instances where it doesn't make me want to throw up. Right. Uh, and also, um, Grant Kirkhope did the soundtrack, and it's pretty great. But other than that, yeah, not a huge fan of this game. No. The end. Boo hiss. Holy crap, we're going to do this again next week, mm-hmm. and hopefully do it faster. But that's our show. No, I'm gonna take Join longer. us next week for, for part three of our four-part Super Mario retrospective series, where we'll be looking back at the Mario games released between 2000 and 2009, which includes games like Super Mario Sunshine, NBA Street Volume 3, and Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. <laughs> yeah! Yeah. 
Once again, you can get in touch with us at mailingkk.com as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. You can like us on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Geekade, uh, and find us in the uh, uh, Twitter <laughs> stuff. I just, Geekade Dan. My brain is. Geekade Dan, Geekade Chris, find us there. More information on the games. Look at the show notes, because I actually did do links for every single game that we talked about last week nuts. and this week, because I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> Listen to us on iTunes and Stitcher. Give us good ratings, because that really helps other people find the show. Seriously, if you've listened to this show for a while and you haven't written us a review, uh, jump on iTunes. Give us a review on, on iTunes or Stitcher. It goes a long way to helping other people discover the show, and, and that means the world. And to look, us. we are the most hopeless shills. You fucking we send us an idea, and we're going to do it, and we're going to overdo it. Exactly. When somebody wanted us, do you, you wanted us to do a Mario retrospective? We're doing yeah. it, and it's hurting it's us. It's hurting physically. <laughs> And Mostly. I love these games. No, not I not all love of them. Mario games, and it's I'm tired. So uh, <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, don't want to play Odyssey anymore. We have God. I seriously like. I if I wasn't actually falling asleep right now, I would be playing Mario Odyssey the moment this podcast is over. But I I have to go to work tomorrow and. Yeah, I do too. I really love Mario Odyssey. It's so good. So, uh, thanks, Evan, our show, our editor, Evan, for making the show listenable. Uh, thank you, Mark TDK Knight, for not only doing our show's theme, but for writing the, uh, for doing the only redeemable quality of Mario's Time Machine. Uh, check him out on SoundCloud and Bandcamp, or his website, which we have a link to in the show notes. Always remember to keep your eyes on geekade.com because that's where we put stuff. <laughs> 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 That's way better than any other tag you've come up with. Keep your eyes on geekade.com because there's shit there uh, sometimes. Because <laughs> stuff happens. Stuff happens on when the you're web. Not and looking when you least expect it. Boom. Dan will love wrestling. There it is. No, not when you least expect it. Every Saturday. I just realized that I did not do a beer post for October. <laughs> and I don't think there was a while of wrestling and like. A week or so ago. Either. No, yes, there was. No. There was. There was totally. There's totally a week that got that got. Skipped. Really? Fuck, man. Yeah. This going back to school thing is throw this statistics course. Her, stupid life. Oh my god, I hate statistics so much. It's so stupid. Like I get a seventy on the homework, and I'm like, ah, that's fuck. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> That's weird. It's a statistical anomaly. It really is. I am the fucking outlier in this course. How I have a B is a fucking mystery. All right, that's it, everybody. Thank you very much for listening. (laughs) How long is this episode? I've been recording for two hours and six minutes. Oh, my. I'm so sorry, Evan. I'm not. On behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games. I'm just going to let this record for another hour while I go shower, and then I'll come down. (laughs) 